Yer. Let me try that one more time. Okay. Yer. Yer. I don't know. It's something at the end of the... Anyway, what's good, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> you have found your way back to What's In Color, the dopest black woman hosted podcast for the preeminent Wheel of Time series. I'm still Kiba. I'm still Char. Jambo. Jambo, my sister. What's good, boo? I'm sleepy. Girl, and that's why I was like, they're yours. They're not yearning. They're not yearning. They <laughs> yours is not yearning. It's, it's, it's all in the throat. I feel like it's, I don't know, phlegmy. I don't know. Anyway, you we have to get that. We have to rearrange our lives because this early morning, I mean, it's not that early, but it's early para enough me, for you. Yeah, it's para early. ti. <laughs> it's early. All right. All right. Yeah, so that's that's what it is. So forgive us. Forgive us our voices. I know. Maybe, I we still going to be loud because that's just what we do. We should have had some tea or something. I should have had some tea. You know, we were so good about tea in the beginning. Yo, we used to have the whole setup. Y'all should have seen it. We used to be it. so thoroughly waters, teas. All of that. When, and, and Now we just show up. Now we just show just up. hit record. Hit, wipe the cold out of our eyes right. and be like, see oh, who's this page in me and why. <laughs> <laughs> it's your man from the barbershop. <laughs> So oh, he was on. in the gambling spot and I heard, heard the intricate, intricate plot. plot. Yeah, I, I heard some it people want to stick you like fly paper. <laughs> oh, hold up, love. Okay, no, we Please can't do chill. this. Please chill. Drop the caper. All right, let's let's not. This. We can't. Yo, do this. last week's episode was under two hours. We did it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we done fucked up already for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to us last, last week. week. <laughs> this week we are. Howdy, but you know so what? Chapter sorry. 28 is, is not that long. Maybe, you know, let's see. Let's see what happens. Oh, girl, I'm not. Let's see what happens. I'm not this might not be any. a long episode. Okay. Maybe. We say that every episode. We shall see. It depends on what what your um is giving is about. I got a few it's givings, too. Cause it was okay, so this might lot, be two so hours. It's going to be a hefty episode. All so, right. Um, may, may, you know what? That'll be the makeup for the short quote unquote episode we did <laughs> last week in our haste to continue life yeah 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 um but we hope you enjoyed it nonetheless you know get in the discord as per usual please get and in let the us discord. know what you thought about that yeah absolutely absolutely oh yeah definitely holla at us in the discord we're in there we mm-hmm. are responsive mm-hmm and everything i mean you can only find me in like two channels but you know other well, than yeah. that, other than that because you know i can't around, see and everything I, and i feel like all the cool kids be in all the channels that i cannot be in and i feel like y'all do that on purpose but that's okay well we have to have an outlet oh do we yes do to we? talk about things spoiler free spoiler f- people who have already read these books we have to have an outlet mm. you have an outlet as well there's a couple mm. channels in there for you okay in the first time readers we love our first time readers oh yeah we do. Okay, y'all like to laugh at us. I think that's what it is. You know who else we love? Hmm. We love our patrons. We do. Let me get my finger ready. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> ah. She's really stretching yes. and cracking knuckles, yo. Yes. <laughs> y'all should see her. Let <laughs> me loosen up these jazz hands. <laughs> so, as always. Spirit fingers. Yes. Just the fact that you all support us for no reason other than mm-hmm. we're just two dope black women. Yep. We appreciate you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a joke. That was for real. We really appreciate you. We love you. We, we love do, you. We do. We do love you. So uh, shout out to Aradiopedia. Woo! Koala Sadai. Hey. Lumen. More hey, what Shady. What up, what up? Mistress Dovey. Goat Brother. Hey. Melissa, Miss Key, Rob Christensen, Doctor Tali, Hey Doctor A, <laughs> Jack Shadows, Hi. Bane and Chiad, Hi Bane and Chiad, Malkier Talks, Hi Malkier Talks, my faves, <laughs> Leia or Leah, I apologize. Hey, hey. Light Blinded Fool, what up, though? DT, Hey Hey, Screaming Spot Monkey, Woo-hoo. Stephen Reese Carter, hey. Spencer R. Hey, Spencer. Iman, hey, hey. Jason Denzel, oh, snap. George, Justin Morrell, April, yes. Anya, Anya, Ashokova. Oh, please let me know if I'm okay. Butchering your name, I apologize if that I am. A little butchery, but uh, we're it felt sorry. Butchery coming out of my mouth. I apologize. Charlie Edmonds, hey Charlie, TT78, Shelly, hi, Ian, and Skeeterish. Ske- and Ske- Skeeter ish. Skeeter ish. Yes. Like Skeeter from 
Hey Arnold, did we do this last week? I don't know if we did. My brain. Okay. I think I might have ADHD. Okay. Okay. I don't know what I'm having problems focusing. <laughs> So I don't know what we did last week. I don't know I what we like did the week before. Deja vu was like, did we do a whole Hey Arnold moment? With I don't think so because Hey Arnold is not from my time. I think we did this last week. No, we did it with Doug. We talked I about Doug, Doug and I was like, I'm too old for I Doug. Was, is Skeeter from Doug or Hey Arnold? You know what? I don't know. Don't know say. You know, shout out to you, Skeeter. Thank you. Skeeter-ish. 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 Thank yes. you for being... Thank you all. Thank you all for supporting us. You know, just you out know. here supporting. Dope and we women. promise we will. Yeah. Add on tears. It's yes. it's coming. It's just it's not coming. just not today. We have to fine tune it. <laughs> we have to fine tune it and 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 in our trying to because we need to it, we need to make it make sense. Understand what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> and and it needs to make sense. Right. It needs right. to make sense. We also want to make sure we're giving you the best bang for your buck. Exactly. We don't want to be out here charging you. You know, five dollars. You know, to to wa- watch me wipe the cold out my eye. That's right. very fair to you, right? Right. So yeah. <laughs> again, we have a form. Um, yes, we do. The form out. Let us know what you Google want. Doc. I think it's a Google form, and just yeah, just be like, you know, I would be willing to pay ten dollars to watch Makiba do three backflips <laughs> every Wednesday for between I... seven to nine p.m. I would pay oh. a lot more money to see you do yeah. three backflips. Good, because that's what it's going to be. I, w- <laughs> I, didn't, I did not say we were going to take every suggestion. <laughs> we'll listen to every suggestion. But if Who you want to see me see do, backflip do backflips, I want to see the backflips. my life, <laughs> then <laughs> you're going to have oh to my pay. Gosh. Okay. All it's right. The house in Maryland I'm looking at. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. Let's. Let's get into we it. We diving in? Yeah, let's Ooh. dive in. So right. last week, yeah. and I really don't remember what we did last week, so I actually had to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> I do this Fair. every week, y'all. I write down, I, I have to write down everything because Fair. my brain, there's just so much in my brain. But anyway, last week we were, we talked about chapters 20, 25 and 26. Uh-huh. And we learned a little bit more about the IEL. Yeah, we, we haven't met anybody. F- no, we haven't from the IO waste, uh-huh. but we met. We learned a little bit about the IO, and we also learned a little bit about people from Carrion. So apparently, the IO gave the people of Carrion a sapling of the Avendasaur tree, which is a tree of life, and that sapling grew for five hundred years. Oh, and then you don't remember this? From- no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We 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 talked about this last week. We did. So go listen. Oh, yeah. No. So listen okay, to the episode. Listen to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> we did talk about this last week, oh, and baby. and we talk, we talked about we, because Jinkoba. Yeah, because <laughs> Jinkoba Loba. Yes. Um, and then we also revisited Tam's fever dream because oh, yes. Tam fat f- fought in this war. Yes, he was, and that's where yes. he found Ran. Yes. So basically, the war started because the king cut down that tree. King Layman, and in his fever, in Tam's fever dream, he was like he talked about that. He uh-huh. was, you know, he was mumbling about it. You know, why did they have to cut the tree down? Why, you know? Mm-hmm. And so he was like, these people made peace, and they never make peace with outsiders. But they, them giving the people of Carrion the sapling of the tree of life was, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like an olive branch kind of thing. Yeah. And so five hundred years old was good, but King Layman cut the tree down for whatever reason. King Layman. L a m a n. Yeah. Of. Oh. Ca- Carrion. Okay. And that's what came in the wreck shit. And that yeah, and that's what started the the war between the Aiel and Carrion. Okay. Right, and, yes. Okay, yes, I do remember this. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. And so Tam was apparently fighting in this yeah. war. And Which, what your ass was doing over there? Because you're not the <laughs> two real of us. Don't worry about me. Don't worry Here we are we we doing said. this again. Uh, yep. Yep. Oh my god. Yep. Mm-hmm. Y'all, I need y'all to help me out. Cause nope. she don't believe me. Nope. Maybe nope. she'll believe y'all. Nope, won't believe you. I need y'all to come in the Discord. Nope, don't do it. Talk and holla at else. Kiba. Talk about something and else. And explain to her Talk about that else. Tam Althor Talk is from the else. two rivers. Talk about, Talk he about just left. Else. He Talk went to war. Else. Oh my God. Else. And anyway, yep. mm-hmm. so Tam found Ran yep. because an Aiel maiden of the spear, uh-huh. which is uh, a warrior society, mm-hmm. uh, had just given birth. It's given, it's, it's given lit. I to, like it. To the, <laughs> to the baby. 
And and then there was this story that the uh, Tawathawan seeker, Rayan, was telling to Elias. And apparently he figured Elias would know yeah. what the fuck this means or whatever. Right. And there was a maiden who was about to die yeah. and went up to a seeker. There was a, a, a band of traveling people mm-hmm. in the waste and she approached the seeker and gave a message about leaf blighter, um, meaning to blind the eye of the world. And nobody knew, knew what the fuck that meant. Uh-huh. Also, last week, we talked about how Perrin was hating on Egwene yeah. with Aram. And is. And is. And is, right. And is. <laughs> we also learned, you know, you know, we learned about, learned a little about the tinkers tinkering with pots. That, that shouldn't be hot. That shouldn't be hot. Right. And we learned about the way of the leaf. Yeah. Which we both agree is whack. Um, and then in chat. I mean, I'm not going to say it's whack. We just, we it's don't subscribe to it. Admirable, right? It's honorable. It's just impractical. That's why I think it's whack. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And then in chapter 26, Rand, Matt, and Tom, they make it to White Bridge. Mm-hmm. And uh, Tom is left behind as he fights a fade. Yo. <laughs> Talk about taking one for the team. Right. Right. <laughs> so that's what we talked about last week. Uh-huh. So this week we're on chapter 27. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The chapter title is called Shelter from the Storm. Uh-huh. And you said last week that this was either going to be a chapter about Rand or Perrin. And you were right. It was a Perrin chapter. Ooh. The, Look at that. The right symbol. Again. <laughs> the symbol is a vine with three leaves. Mm-hmm. So Perrin is stressed out about the slow pace of the Tuatuan. Like they just chilling. You know what I'm saying? They living a mm-hmm. life. You know mm-hmm. they, you know, eating food and Getting listening high. to music and dancing and mm-hmm. tinkering with pots that are hot and mm-hmm. you know all no, those things. The pots that they got ought not to be hot. They ought not to be hot. And <laughs> you're right. Gosh. And Elias keeps telling Perrin to just just be easy, right. chill, enjoy the right. you know, live in a moment. Mm-hmm. Take a mushroom, if you will. Right, <laughs> <laughs> a shroom. They're special, you know. <laughs> enjoy the journey, and and Elias says something is telling him to wait a few mm-hmm. days. He said he has, I guess, you know, he has a a, a feeling, a hunch, or whatever. He, you know, he says, you know, take life as it comes, run when you have to, fight when you must, rest mm-hmm. when you can. Yeah. Solid advice, I think, I some, think so. in certain situations. So Perrin felt like he was the only one who was worried about Trollocs and shit mm-hmm. like that. Um, he tried to get with Egwene. She's always busy talking with Ela or um, dancing with Aram. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't like it. And um, so apparently there's this like sexy, scandalous dance yeah. that the that the tinker women do mm. and it's so perrin funny. kept blushing and so they kept doing it <laughs> <laughs> so he could blush <laughs> and then uh, Egwene learned it and um arm was watching her all like hungrily mm-hmm. like undressing Hungry, her with his eyes yes. right <laughs> <laughs> so perrin finally tries to get gets with Egwene and tries to convince her that they that they're not safe and you know they mm-hmm. need to leave and Egwene was like listen just chill out whatever's mm-hmm. gonna happen is gonna happen and she goes back doing what she's doing or whatever Ela, every time she looks at perrin she smiles and she's polite mm-hmm. but she peeps that axe yeah and then her eyes turn sad or whatever so perrin is like on some real petty shit he purposely wore the axe mm-hmm. and purposely had his cloak back so that the they could so they could see the axe right. you know just because he just he was so frustrated he felt like being an asshole he, he was definitely being an asshole mm-hmm. you know because he was frustrated that there's tinkers and fade uh, tinkers trollocs and fades mm-hmm. and shit like that and they just chilling like yeah. he felt like they were just living in this utopia this unrealistic thing because he also was like and if the trollocs come they're not gonna fight they're not gonna fight they're they gonna run so then i'm gonna be out here by myself right trying to like fight these things yeah so he was a little he was a little frustrated right (laughs) (laughs) right him and his wolves and so he was thinking that his nightmares were ordinary right Mm -hmm. until they weren't weren't. (laughs) um there's no you know baal's man no you know beelzebub's cousin twice removed twice removed on his daddy's daddy's side yeah um he was fully aware of the wolves and he could feel their contempt for the two 
uh, Dapple was getting impatient with the slow travel and so was wind. And then Perrin has a dream. And it was normal at first. He's in Mistress Luhan's kitchen sharpening his axe, mm-hmm. which was, you know, dreams are weird. So Mistress Luhan would never allow that in, mm-hmm. in her kitchen. But, you know, it's a dream. Mm-hmm. And a wolf comes into the kitchen, curls up next to Perrin. Mrs. Luhan is ignoring everything. She's doing her cooking right. and baking. Like whatever she cooking, it sounds like it's busted. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so suddenly the wolf rolls, you know, being alarmed. Mm-hmm. And here comes Beelzebub's cousin, twice removed on his daddy's side. Mm-hmm. Basically, long story short, he burns the wolf <laughs> with Which a crook like, of his finger. Right. I was like, like well, wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Not the wolf. Yeah, yeah. Just Not you put the wolf up in flames. I'm so sad about that. Right, 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 right. And their little back and forth fire face tells Perrin, you know, that if he is the one, then he is his. And he says, the eye of the world will consume you. So we get in the name of the book again. Yeah. Then he threw a raven at Perrin's face. Because what? <laughs> Let's just top it all off. Right. To make and it even the, the raven's beak pierced his left eye. And then he suddenly wakes up. Mm-hmm. And there's no blood or anything like that. And then that's when Elias is standing right there like, yeah, my man, it's time to go. You know what I just noticed as you said that? Mm-hmm. When Perrin has a dream uh, and he's injured in the dream, mm-hmm. he's fine in real life. When Rand has the dreams and he's injured he in the He got dreams, pricked by a thorn. He is injured in real life. Hmm, that's interesting. But is this the first time Perrin is injured? Is this the first time we see Perrin get injured in dream? I don't remember. I want in to say because we don't, dreams. we don't, we don't, he doesn't go into detail. They just say, oh, the rat or oh, the whatever. Like they don't show because we're always in Rand's head. Right. So, so we don't not, know. We don't know. We don't but know. But I will say now that we're actually in Perrin's head. Mm-hmm. And he's actually having a dream where he is actually injured in the dream. Mm-hmm. When he wakes up, there's no scratch, there's no blood. Mm-hmm. But with Rand, he pricks a finger in the dream mm-hmm. and he's bleeding. Mm-hmm. And so, so I think I'm feeling like this confirms or at least solidifies to the reader. And again, I guess we have to also look at Matt as well. Mm-hmm. We don't see any like random injuries that matt has Mm -hmm. after he has a dream that's interesting that's an interesting point i never thought about that i yeah like i think this kind of is subconsciously done to point the reader into the rand is the savior reborn that's not the dragon the dragon reborn (laughs) kind of you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. theme or theory Mm -hmm. right um and yeah because why is he the only one that's physically injured in you know in real life from something that happened in a dream. That's so interesting. I honestly mm-hmm. never considered that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I never, never thought about it. Never talked about it. Never discussed it. Yeah. I don't I know. Think, I think that's a, a little I don't even know if it's a thing. I don't even know if it's a thing or, if, or the thing that, you know, maybe I just missed all these uh-huh. years. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I honestly don't ever remember it being like recalled. Right. Later. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. as a, as a confirmation of oh like like no one at any point and, and it's i guess i'm giving spoilers no one at any point says oh yeah i didn't get hurt in the you know what i'm saying right so not that i know that that i can recall like i don't i yeah. don't know i don't know but so, but it's interesting because it could be what you we don't know because there were lots of things little easter eggs and things like that yeah that is not so obvious and then you find out you know, during an interview with RJ yeah. or something like, you know what I mean? If uh-huh, someone asked uh-huh. the right question, yeah, you know, or if not, you know, he would rafo us. Mm. Read and find out came from Robert Jordan. I just want you to know that. So like when we rafo you, just know that we've all been rafoed. I don't care about that part. <laughs> <laughs> I care about me. She's like, I don't care, I don't care about what all you've been <laughs> through. I don't care about that. I don't, you know, I'm very it's much a, an individual. You're in, if you're in the fandom, oh, you've been rafoed. Okay. Like, it's what it is. Okay. All right. So, yes, Elias is there. Tell them, like, let's go. It's time to go. And the wolves start howling, and Perrin can feel their sensations. The sensations are saying fire, pain, fire, hate, hate, kill. So... <laughs> Mm. Elias tells Rayan that they are leaving. And he tells, oh, Rayan. Rayan. Okay. Yeah, R A E N. Yeah. I don't know how to say it without it sounding like Rand. <laughs> so I'm like, Rayan. Yes. Yeah. That's what I would think. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll just call him the Seeker. So the Seeker <laughs> 
doesn't let them leave without them saying bye to everybody. Like, you gotta <laughs> hug every. So they hug everybody, you know. And Perrin was actually surprised that Egwene was like, oh, we leaving? All right, bet. Let's go. Oh, she's on a mission. Yeah, she's on a mission. She's, she's definitely on a mission. On a mission. She's having fun. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, Tarvalon she knows, awaits. She knows what it is. Mm-hmm. She knows what it is. Mm-hmm. Arm is a little salty. He wants Egwene to stay. So mm. he's a little salty about I'm that. I'm surprised he doesn't leave. I think we're all surprised he didn't leave. And they noted that his grandmother was relieved yeah. that he didn't leave. Mm-hmm, she was mm-hmm. worried yeah. that he would leave. So after it's all done, mm-hmm. the seeker gives like the formal farewell. Yeah. And Elias responds. And they all look at him like, what the hell? Because <laughs> I guess he never done the the farewell right. formal he probably thing before. Always just- Dips before they wake up. Or something like that. Yeah, maybe. And he gives me the energy of, I'm going to sneak out while everybody's sleeping. Right, right, cl- yeah. There was also noted that they don't wake up before 12. Yeah. They, they don't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they, <laughs> they, they, they just go, chilling. You know, they just chilling. So yeah, he's, yeah. He, he's up at first light. Like, right. Deuces. Wolfman, you right, know, wolf right. brother. He's like, all right, it's 445. It's a nice, right. crispy Tuesday morning. I'm going to gonna make my way. So they leave and Zapple, Wind, and Hopper roll up with them and i think they were send talking to elias like they send elias thoughts but parent is like listening i guess mm. because parent realizes that the wolves were telling elias about his dream is Did that you catch what that? was happening i think that's what was happening let me I, grab my I handy think... dandy novel book here. handy dandy novel book um <laughs> <laughs> shout out to blues clues okay that's it <laughs> All right, I'm going to read it. It's at the end of the chapter. It says, Dapple, Wind, and Hopper came to greet Elias, not frolicking as the dogs had done, but a dignified meeting of equals. Perrin caught what passed between them. So between the wolves and Elias. Uh-huh. Fire eyes, pain, heart fang, death, heart fang. Perrin knew what they meant. The dark one. They were telling about his dream. Their dream. So he's well, saying they all had the same yeah, dream. Yeah, and listen, they got burnt once somebody didn't make it somebody, somebody got toasted <laughs> somebody got toasted where's burn <laughs> <laughs> burn was not burn left them burn is Listen. not yeah burn burn is not fucking with them burn mm-hmm. was like fuck y'all mm-hmm. so <laughs> so then he thinks to himself parent thinks to himself you know he was like well i thought my dreams were safe Tip. Well, i thought the wolves you know the wolves made my dreams safe mm-hmm. and so the wolves respond to his thought and they say not complete except Full heart, full mind. You still struggle. Only complete when you accept. Ooh. So it's like Perrin is fighting yeah. this reality of uh-huh. him being able to communicate with wolves. Yeah. And because he hasn't fully accepted it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of course you're not going to be protected in your dream. You don't even believe. You, do you hear that, Nynaeve? Do you hear that, <laughs> ma'am? Do you? Are you aware? She's not, but She's not it would listening. be nice. It would be nice if yeah. she could be like, oh. Oh, maybe I need to just fully maybe accept. Maybe I just need to accept. Right, 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 acceptance. right. Acceptance. Right. <laughs> so then he forced the wolves out of his head and he surprises himself because he didn't think that that was possible. Mm-hmm. And um, so then he's like, I ain't never letting him back in my head again. <laughs> mm-hmm, okay, because that's the right answer. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, the chapter ends, but right, <laughs> right at the very end of the chapter, you know, Igu- uh, Perrin was thinking about why Egwene was spending so much time with Arm's grandmother mm-hmm. and he asked her like why do you spend so much time talking to her you know if you wasn't dancing with that he says <laughs> he said if you all weren't dancing with that long legged fellow all in the business you were talking to her like some kind of secret and so Egwene says well Ela was giving me advice on being a woman mm-hmm. and Perrin's dumbass was like oh men we don't need advice from other men on how to be men we just we oh, just we be just men, be men. Mm-hmm. And so Egwene said, "That is probably why you make such a bad job of it." Oof! And then Elias cracks up, and that's Oof. how the, <laughs> and that's how the chapter ends. That was a good one. That was the listen, the shade, honey, the shade. Oh, I love it. Okay, I love the shade. I love listen. it. I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. So, do you want to recap chapter twenty eight now, or do you want to talk about some themes or some um to be steadfast or some? Let's let's get into a couple of themes. Okay. So since we're already here, mm-hmm. let's talk about that last little line that Egwene said in mm-hmm. terms of her conversations with what is her? How do Ela? you say Ela? I'm been saying, I'm saying Isla because I it's I L A. I don't know if it's Ela Isla. 
I don't know. Let listener, me friend, friend, listeners. Help. <laughs> uh, Let me tell you something. Uh-huh. Character, name, pronunciation. Uh-huh. It varies depending mm. on who you ask. Even the the original audiobooks, sometimes they'll pronounce like a city in one way. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, in the very beginning, we learned about there was like some sort of war in Gildon. Uh-huh. In the aud- the original audiobooks, in the beginning of the book, they pronounce Gildon, Giladon. And then later on, see. they self-correct, I guess. I can see. And um, so the shout, editor. Out to, <laughs> shout out to Michael Kramer and Kate Redding. The editor wasn't like, oh, we need to go back. <laughs> or they're just too far along. Yeah, they just they left it. Like, like nah, we don't record it. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. <laughs> We don't record it, all of this. We just gonna we just gonna leave that there. But yeah, there's no. Oh, was that you checking the glossary? There's no. Wow. There's no entry for Ela. Okay. Yeah. So or Isla. Mm, okay. I don't. I don't know. So, well. So anyway. So Egwene mentions that Ela Isla was <laughs> <laughs> teaching her or giving her some gems on mm-hmm. or. Advice, I should say, I think is the the word she used on mm-hmm. how to be a woman. Mm-hmm. Now, uh oh, womano e womano. Oh, would it be womana? Oh gosh, whatever. Mujer, a mujer. Because that's real Spanish. Oh, all right? I oh you want you was on to fake Spanish. Spanish? Oh my bad. <laughs> you know, trying to do fake Spanish here. But what advice do you have? Or have you gotten on being a woman? What advice have I gotten on being a woman? Or have you given? I don't recall giving gender specific advice to anybody. Mm -hmm. For my children, I'll give them advice on how to be a better human. Yeah. I don't recall talking to my daughters and saying, Mm -hmm. unless I'm giving advice on like, you know, when you have your period or something, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. something that is gender specific, mm-hmm. but I've never heard myself say, listen, let me tell you something about being a woman and mm-hmm. when you're dealing with these men and blah, blah, blah. Because what if they don't deal with men? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so um, I've never, I've never done that. I'm sure I have been given advice. Yeah. What advice have you been given? About being a woman. And y'all, let me tell y'all, I, I tell y'all this every week. I have no idea what questions she's going to ask. <laughs> and I should just like start trying to guess. Like, mm. because now I'm sitting here thinking. So there's going to be a lot of dead air that we're going to be deleting. Because <laughs> I have to think like parent. So. Uh, what advice? What advice have I been given? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Amanda, let me give you some thinking music. <laughs> 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 It kind of is like the oh Jeopardy. My gosh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you need some more thinking music, coming. No, it's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not helpful, right? Like, it's so distracted because <laughs> now I'm listening to music and I don't <laughs> forgot what I'm supposed to be thinking about. Um, <laughs> what has my grandmother said to me? My grandmother didn't really talk to me. Because <laughs> children should be seen and not heard, so I didn't really get a lot of conversations from my grandmother. My mother, girl, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll start. I was kind of on my own. <laughs> I'll start. So one of the things that I got in the, and it was advice from my grandmother. And she would always tell me as a woman to make sure that I keep cash on me. Oh, At yeah. I've been, I've been given $10, that advice. $10. Okay. Yeah. $5. You know, this is back yeah. in the day. So, you know, $10, $5. Always, always be able to 30. have cab fare. That's what I was right. told. Yeah. Always, always have cab fare. Always be able to get home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've definitely been told that. Yes. And I didn't realize it then, but that was a safety precaution yes. that she was trying to instill in me mm-hmm. at a young age. Right. I was, I was maybe 12. 10 when she started telling me that and i'm mm-hmm. like well with money i'm all with you i don't get an allowance i don't have a job what do you mean keep money on me what would i need money for she's just like hold it just hold it in mm-hmm. just remember this and so now i find myself and i'm like oh yeah i got a little cash i got a little something but then i try not to spend it because grandma said mm-hmm. that i need to always keep some cash on me right mm. But it's interesting because the keeping cash on me is not as important as making sure that I am secure in 
getting home safely. Right. right? So I have cash on me, but in a cashless world, right, right, which is where we're maneuvering to, what good what good does that do? Right. Well, I think it just I think the advice just shifts. Make sure you have a way to get home. A way to get home, which is the the thing you that know? she was trying to instill, right? That was the so lesson. So make sure your underneath. bank account has some money, right? So if you need to, you know, right, that was the you lesson. need to get a, a Uber or a Lyft right. or something. You have you have the means to do so. Yeah, that was the yeah. lesson that was kind of buried in the greater picture or the the mm-hmm. the one track mindedness right because my yeah. grandmother is you know from a way different era yeah, yeah. And so it was always keep five dollars in your pocket and i was always and know. i was you know now that i think about it i was also yeah told you know when you go out on a date yes make sure you have enough yes. money to cover yourself yes in case your date is trash mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. and and a way home yeah enough money to pay for your way yes. your own way yep don't yep. pull it out let them pay your way yep but mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. have the money to yep. pay your way. And actually, mm-hmm. I kept that advice. <laughs> Hello. I, I kept that and advice. And it's so and helpful. It. Yeah. It is how, it. I was just like, okay, advice on being a woman. Now, can that apply to all people? I think so. Absolutely. But I also feel like for women, it tends to be a little bit more pertinent that we protect ourselves. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the things. Another thing that I got, and this one I, you know, it's real trivial and it plays a lot into respectability politics, which mm-hmm. is not my judge. I don't, I don't do respectability politics, but it was, and I this came from my mom. I don't know what respectability politics means. So respectability politics means that you need to mold yourself into the politics or the standards of being in a respectable way. Okay. So like, um, ladies should never, or oh, ladies okay. should it. always, I got or, it. you know, you know what I'm saying? Or like got black it. women should and right. black, you know, like the, the whole respectability politics of maybe you should straighten your hair when mm. you're at work or maybe, you know, so you like, should. so like a, so a lady never spits. Yeah. Yes. Respectability politics. So that's respectability. Yeah. When I, when I choose to swallow, I'm being respectable. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant saliva. Look at me and I my mean, innocence. There's saliva Look in at there. Look at me and my <laughs> full on innocent mind. I'm sorry. We went white and color I after dark. I had no <laughs> idea you were going there. Well, he was all serious. And I- well, I'm like, yes, lessons. And you're like, but I like to swallow. Right. right. It's actually enjoyable. But I mean, no, my husband listens to this show. He knows what I prefer. So and I think we just going to. Yeah. As long as he knows what I prefer, <laughs> I think we can move on. But um, well, I don't have a husband. So, OK, well, you know what? <laughs> hey y'all hey, <laughs> i was gonna say you gonna put out the back call you letting the people know remember we talked about i'm horrible at flirting <laughs> okay <laughs> so this was sure attempt at flirting with you <laughs> with, the, with the whole world <laughs> hey world hey world did you know, did you know? <laughs> that it some must fun fact. bear sexual time right <laughs> well Slide into our DMs, send us those. Let me know if you prefer a woman who likes to swallow. Uh, (laughs) But please, please, if you are a man or a person who prefers a a person who prefers another person who swallows, I would I would like I would like for you to drink lots of water. Well, Marion says something about watermelons. That that's pineapples. A, yeah. Pineapples are always the go-to. Mm-hmm. You know, so just you know, make sure your pH is balanced, balanced, and and in tip-top shape before drink alkaline water. We too. send we said right. Don't don't drink tap. Tap don't count. Right. Um. You know the chlorine and all that stuff. But you know don't don't send Shar into um into the eye of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Don't don't send her into the blight. Oh don't <laughs> keep it clean. All right, keep it, keep clean. it clean. Oh my gosh! Well, <laughs> so you were saying respectability Kiva? politics yes. in terms of dressing, right? right? So right, three fourths of cloth. Oh, oh, 
Gosh, right? Okay, because I was also raised in the nation of Islam. So we all know. <laughs> if you don't, please Google it if you need to. Three but fourths of cloth never right, showing you stuff. Yes, boom. yes. Yeah, you know the respectability of it all. So like, I you know, it. skirts to the shin and ankle. Yeah. Slips. You yes. remember slips? I remember slips. I slips had to wear and them. pantyhose. I, you know, it, it and it, I... Ugh, right but that was a part of the whole idea of being a woman mm -hmm. right and because everyone's idea of of not everyone but some people's idea of being a woman correlates to a woman's ability to to marry mm. a woman's ability to to mate Mm -hmm. A woman's ability to be courted off, right? right? You get a lot of the respectability. This is how you need to dress to get a man. Mm -hmm. This is how you need to act to get a man. Mm. Go to these finishing schools, you know, style your hair this way, mm -hmm. you know, flirt that way. And it's, again, respectability politics. But I got a lot of that, mm -hmm. you know, growing up. And that was the general advice on, you know, being a woman. And then, like you mentioned with the menstruals, it was very much like, when you get that, you know, tell anybody, you take, you know, and right. you hide your tampons and you hide your pads and mm -hmm. you slip them. Like, I had this thing where I had to, like, well, I didn't have to, but I took note to, like, slip my tampons in my sleeves. Mm. If I needed to, like, go to the restroom and change my tampons, right. I would take the tampon, I would slip it in my sleeve. Because, God forbid, you walk around with, with tampon a tampon in your, in your hand. Yeah. Right? Or yeah. a pad, right? And, yeah. and, you to take yeah, care when you, of yourself. It, it, even today, if you go to like the pharmacy or whatever, mm -hmm. you go to like Rite Aid or Walgreens or whatever, and I, I notice if I'm buying mm -hmm. sanitary napkins, tampons, or whatever, yep. they're asking me, "Do you want a double bag?" Yeah, they still in yes. 2023 ask yeah. me, "Do I want a double bag?" Yeah. I'm like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. "No, why are we wasting bags for?" Yeah, Matter of fact, I don't even need a bag. I don't need a bag. I, I can, get like, a menstrual. Right. I, I, am, I am a, a woman. <laughs> I'm a person with a uterus. Right. And I get a menstrual. Yeah. And so I'm very, it's, it's, you know, I, I've in my big age, <laughs> I've grown very weary of this idea. Right. Mm -hmm. Like for a long time, if I was dating you and I, I asked you to like go to the store and get me some like tampons or pads or something and mm -hmm. you couldn't do it, then we could. What are we doing here? Yeah. Right? Like, why you're is ashamed that, like, to get yeah, me why are you some like, why are we period sanitary shaming napkins? Now? Yeah, right. Period shaming? Like, it was, yeah. it was just, yeah. you know. And so the, the whole respectability politics about how women should be, I wonder, you know, as we bring it back to the book a little, if that was some of the advice... That Egwene was getting. Egwene was getting, right? Hmm. The Because, you know, she's flirting with old boy. Right. The grandson. So right. it's like, well, you're of that age and it's my grandson. So here's what you need to do, right? right. You curl your hair, you know, counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. And your skirt should be no higher than the, you know, base of your shin. Right. You know, those, right. those kind of like stupid, you know, here's how you cook mm -hmm. to get your man. You know, it's like. You know what's interesting? So my grandmother who in a large part raised me mm -hmm. in a way she didn't give me advice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. outspoken advice mm -hmm. but she taught me those things yeah by saying her actions. by her actions yeah and so growing up i knew i had to wear slips because my grandmother bought me slips yep mm -hmm, and pantyhose mm -hmm. yep so i put them on i wore mm -hmm. them and but there wasn't a conversation Right. She didn't say, this is why we wear slips or this mm -hmm. is why you need to, you know, not mm -hmm. have your legs exposed or. Yeah. She didn't have those kind of conversations. She didn't have any conversations with me. Mm -hmm. You know, as a matter of fact, I didn't, when I got my period, I thought I was dying. Wow. Because my grandmother didn't tell me anything. Mm -hmm. I literally, I could not fathom what could be wrong, like what could be wrong with me that I'm bleeding from my vagina. That much. Right. That much. That much. Oh. Why is there blood coming out of my vagina? Right. Am I sick? Am I, mm -hmm. I didn't cut myself. I'm 11 years old. I have no right. idea what, you know, mm -hmm. what it is. And she didn't explain it to me. She just taught me how to, what she did was she taught me how to use the washboard to clean my panties. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then I learned that, okay, I got to hand wash my panties. I can't mm -hmm. just throw them in a washing machine mm -hmm. like my other clothes. I, so right. I learned you hand wash your panties when, mm -hmm. you know, when you get blood on them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, not because she had a conversation. I don't know if it was because, so my grandmother, it was definitely that era of children should be seen and not heard. And yeah. also there are certain things that are taboo. You don't talk about it, mm -hmm. you know? And so a lot of these lessons and, and this advice, I did receive it, mm -hmm. but it was indirect. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Because I definitely wasn't allowed to wear skirts that was above my knees. Yeah. But nobody ever said to me, a woman does not, a respectable woman does not wear short skirts. Yeah, yeah. Those words were never said to Uh me. But the clothing that was bought for me basically said it. Right. You know, so, so yeah. I think that's why it was so hard for me to remember, like, Advice? No, I was never because nobody ever talked. It, right, to me. it wasn't advice. Right, right. Like, nobody pulled you to the side. And exactly. Set you down. It was. It was still. In, it was still mirroring. It was instilled yeah. in me. Yeah, it yeah. was. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. yeah. How have those things kind of shifted and and shaped you? How, I mean, how have you? And this is an assumption that you're unlearning those things, right? I'm gonna assume that, but like, mm-hmm. how has the process been in unlearning those the the respectability politics behaviors? Was it like a full on rebellion or was it very conscious effort to not? It was a it was a very subtle change, I think, for for me. I think as I got older and I had a little bit more autonomy. Yeah. And I would decide, you know, what I want to mm-hmm. do. I mean, I remember being nineteen, eighteen, nineteen, actually even younger. Mm-hmm. And I was really, really I was really skinny and so i would wear crop tops Mm -hmm. i would wear poom poom shorts Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um you know aka daisy dukes Uh uh-huh aka shorts so small booty cutters little booty cutters (laughs) Uh uh-huh you know oh no coochie cutters that's what they were yeah yeah coochie cutters coochie cutters yeah yeah i was always tall Mm -hmm. and long-limbed and i like to show off my (laughs) long legs and Mm -hmm. you know but I didn't, I wouldn't do that like in front of my grandmother. You know what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm, you know, but it was, it, but it wasn't like a conscious rebellion. Like, fuck that. I'm going to wear what I want. Yeah. You know, it's not like I leave the house in one, in I, one set right. of clothes and, <laughs> you then, gotta switch out. and then I switch out when I get around a corner. <laughs> no, I, I would leave the, I would dress like mm-hmm. that as a teenager, as a teenager. Mm. I would do that. And, you know, I stopped, eventually stopped wearing slips, started mm-hmm. shaving my legs. Right. You know what mm-hmm, I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, because I'm going bare legged now and, right. you know, things like that. So it wasn't a, a, a an intentional I'm going to rebel and do my own thing. I just think I evolved, mm-hmm. you know, and and still evolving because I'm not wearing crop tops and mm-hmm. I'm not wearing poom poom shorts. Right. Right? Right, right, you know, right. um, I mean, my body is shaped a whole lot differently than it was when I was a teenager. But even mm-hmm. if it was still shaped like that, uh-huh. I wouldn't I would no longer, you know, right wear those things and Mm -hmm. you know that's just you know just me being evolved being older you know and and there's not not to say there's anything wrong with anybody who wears poop from shorts and crop tops and things like that you know but i'm just not into that right so i think that's the difference right because the respectability politics takes your your authority away it takes your autonomy away Mm. when you're falling into this idea that i have to do something because Mm -hmm. society says Mm -hmm. because this is how it's perceived if i don't and blah 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 Mm -hmm. when you get to the point where you can start making decisions whether it's you know, in alignment with or not in alignment mm-hmm. on your own, then I think that's when it you kind of shift into be, like becoming your own woman. Right. I'll say. Right. Now, whether you in your own womanhood is someone who follows the respectability politics, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Right. As long as you're doing it because you are comfortable with it as mm-hmm. opposed to something that society has pressured you into Mm -hmm. so i think that's the the biggest difference with that Mm -hmm. um and in terms of like growing out of the respectability politics and and the advice that we're given as little girls on how to be Mm -hmm. proper women right and into being our own woman Mm -hmm. right so that was fun that was an interesting little Mm -hmm. chat Mm -hmm. on womanhood and listener friend friend listeners if you agree or disagree, you know what to do. Yeah. Hop in the Discord. Hit us up. Share your thoughts. And that's open to all peoples. You know, we're not mm-hmm. going to limit this conversation to, you know, people who identify as women, mm-hmm. or, you know, people with uterus or, you know, anything like that. Mm-hmm. Just join in. Everybody have fun. Yep. So my other thing was the thing that really stuck out to me too, also included <laughs> in that chapter was when Perrin and Elias were having that conversation and Elias was telling him, and I think you read the quote verbatim where mm-hmm. he was saying, 
we need to wait. There's something in my gut that's telling me that we need to wait. Yeah, just and chill and just chill be in and a be moment. Easy. and yeah. We'll know when to leave. Right. So, you know, that, that gut instinct, mm-hmm. right? That feeling. Mm-hmm. So has there ever been a time where you didn't listen to that gut feeling or that instinct? And what were those cons- consequences? And what lesson did you learn from that? Oh, my God, y'all. You see how deep she be getting? What? <laughs> That's deep. That's deep. It is because I gotta. I'm. I'm on my parent again. I gotta sit here and think <laughs> about mm-hmm. a time mm-hmm. where I did not listen to my gut. Uh huh. And what were the consequences? Yeah. I guess that happens most often in my romantic relationships, mm. where my gut tells me this is not for you. Yeah. And then I ignore it because I want to be in this relationship so badly. Man. And then I learn. Later, years later, mm-hmm, sometimes mm-hmm. that, hey, remember that gut feeling mm-hmm. that you were getting before? Yeah. Well, this is what it is. <sighs> so the only thing off the top of my head yeah, yeah. that I can that I can. I'm sure if I thought about it, I, I can yeah. think of other other examples. But yeah, in romantic relationships. Yeah. Where I ignore red flags yeah. or ignore whatever is telling me that this is not for you Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or this is not what you want Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what lesson did you learn from those experiences i learned that i need to always be honest with myself Mm -hmm. which is sometimes kind of tough because it's easy to make a decision and stand by it Mm -hmm. and say no this is what i want sometimes it's harder to have to go back and say well i was wrong yeah i thought i knew what i wanted Mm -hmm. And I was wrong. So I need to be honest with myself Mm. at all times. Am I in this situation because it's the best situation for me? Yeah. Or am I in it because I just want to be in it for whatever reason and I'm going to ignore gut feelings, red flags, et cetera, et cetera, Mm -hmm. just for the sake of. And I think that and and I apologize because he actually listens to the podcast. But I think that's what happened in my marriage. Mm. I I wanted to be married mm. so badly. And I met someone who wanted a wife. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that we took the time, the necessary time to really get to know each other. You know, things happen pretty fast with us. Mm. And, you know, we got married right away. We didn't even have a wedding. We, you know... And, you know, not to say that there was no love there. Right. You know what I mean? But I think that had I taken the time to really think about who I was. Yeah. Who this person was that I was getting to know mm-hmm. and, and really be honest with myself mm. and say, and, and, and it, that's definitely what happened. I definitely remember thinking maybe this is not for you. But then I like, no, ignore that, like got rid of that thought and said, no, nope, this is he's so sweet. He's a nice guy. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have any kids. He wants to be married. Mm-hmm. I'm with it. Let's get married. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so. So. And, and that wasn't a, it wasn't a bad it wasn't a bad marriage or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But it just wasn't it just wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't honest with myself mm. about it not being for me, Man. you know, and. Apologies, ex hubby. I know you're, I know you're listening. <laughs> thank you, thank you for supporting the Hi, podcast. Ex-hubby. Yeah, thanks. He, he's the one who introduced me to these books, so that's why he listens oh. to us <laughs> and he supports us. So you know, so it's all good. We're still we're friends. You know, yeah. We're, well, yeah, that's all good. You amazing know, but, that you've been able to keep and maintain your friendship. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's super important. Yeah. You know, he's the father of my children. Right, I was like, gonna, I, you know I wasn't I mean? sure if you want to like, drop that, but yeah, yeah like you guys like, have yeah. children together. Yeah, I love that it's amicable. I love that you guys are yeah, friends. You absolutely. know, and that you learned to trust yourself. Yeah, right. Yeah, and to listen to yourself when something emotionally, internally doesn't mm-hmm. feel as good as it should. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. and I, and I. I think about this a lot, particularly when it comes to like relationships and marriages, because I am I'm newlywed married, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the things that made me so sure that this was my, you know, life partner, my, mm-hmm. you know, twin flame, my, you know, whatever mm-hmm. 
woo term you want to mm-hmm. assign to it was that I internally, like in my gut, mm-hmm. I felt so calm. Mm. I felt so prepared. Mm. I felt so emotionally ready, mm-hmm. you know, to to do this. And, you know, really quick, funny story. I didn't want to get married ever. I mm-hmm. never, ever, ever wanted to be married. I never wanted to be a wife. Mm. Um, I never wanted to be a mom. Mm-hmm. I had no interest in those things because of what I saw around me. Gotcha. Right? And so it's like, if this is what marriage is, Mm -hmm. y'all can keep that shit. Mm -hmm. Motherhood, you keep that shit too. Right. No parts, no things. Right. Right? And then you meet someone who who unintentionally, right? Because when we met, he didn't want a relationship. Mm -hmm. I was looking for a relationship, but again, not a marriage. Right. You know, a partner. You know, a road dog. And look at y'all. Right, it's, and it's so interesting. And they're so super cute, y'all. I just it, want you to know. <laughs> again, the, <laughs> I love them. I love them so much. Just it was just the the clarity that I felt, mm-hmm. the calm, the still. When I get gut reactions, right, like red flags, alert, I feel it in my gut, mm-hmm. and it feels like a TMI. It feels like I have to take a really bad poop. Right, like in my yeah, stomach, your stomach hurts. Right, it's, it's in knots. Yeah. It's tied up and it's, yeah. it's aggressive almost. It's like, mm. oh my gosh, like this is not right. Get out, yeah. run. Yeah. Right, in the very moment I met him, right, and normally I'm I'm good at listening to my gut. Right, <laughs> I, I got to tell the story one day of of our meeting. Okay, because my meeting him was in a succession of guys. Right. Yes, I, was, I know that story. I, I know, was yes, yes. I was really short version. I was perched 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 <laughs> at a bar and a friend of mine display. i was put on display <laughs> if you will and a friend of mine just continuously brought suitors over <laughs> to to behold me it was like speed dating <laughs> it was speed dating but when was, nobody when agreed nobody to it just you, it was just me and a bunch of dudes and a bunch of dudes <laughs> all right tell me it was like the third or fourth person that i had met in this succession of men and so like i'm talking to these guys and i'm not sensing danger but i'm also you know my gut's like eh, like yeah yeah okay all right all right, and just right, right at the moment where I was like, "Look, I'm going home." Right. My quest for a boyfriend is done today. Right. <laughs> Talib comes up, and we get to talking. And I, I, there is only one other human on this earth that I have felt so calm mm-hmm. and just safe mm-hmm. around, mm-hmm. and that's my brother, mm-hmm. my best friend, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I was like, I recognize this emotion of his fine of, ass. Nope, nope. Nope. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Nope. We're I'm not sorry. doing that. <laughs> He'll be here one day. He'll be here one day. Soon. He's he has agreed. Okay. He has agreed. So let's, let's get it on the calendar. Like, what are we waiting for? N- and, bye. So anyway, so uh I don't even forgot where I was going. Thanks, Char. I don't forgot where I was going with the story. Anyway, you felt the only I other felt, person you yeah, felt calm so was felt, with, with your brother. I felt this this calmness and that was it was really interesting to see. The, the kind of life that you can create for yourself when you start to listen to yourself mm-hmm. and pay attention to your gut and pay attention to your emotions, mm-hmm. naive, and yes. and really focus in on on what it is that you need in, in moment by moment. Yeah. And that's what I mean about being honest with yourself. Yes. That's exactly, you yeah. You definitely voiced exactly what I, that that's the meaning I'm trying yeah, to yeah. to get out when I say be honest with yourself. Yeah. How's that been working out for you? It's been working out pretty good, I think. It's a work in progress. It is. You it's know. Always, always. It's always a work always. in progress. Yeah, yeah. Always, you know. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. Mm-hmm. Aww. Yeah. Oh, look at life stuff. Look at that. Look at, li- look at life lifing right. and adulting look, and yeah. growing and learning. All that good stuff. And of course, listener, friend, friend, listeners, I'm going to ask again. I'm going to ask after every theme now just to remind y'all, drop it in the Discord, your thoughts yes what you think about that did, Holla at us. is there a moment where you didn't listen to your gut what consequences did you suffer was there a moment where you absolutely listened to your gut and you got everything mm-hmm. that you couldn't even dream of mm-hmm. right like just you know chat with us yeah. i get lonely Share. sometimes because y'all always be in the spoiler chat oh bitch <laughs> <laughs> how dare you how dare you <laughs> okay we're moving on oh. Oh, I'm gonna give Keep a hug after yeah, the recording. No, no, I don't want your hug. <laughs> I'll you give know, you your hugs funky and duck. kisses. Bye, dark friend. Oh my Bye. god, I am not a dark friend. Bye. Maybe I am. You, yeah. Right. Anyway, 
Um, All right. So you had anything into, else or you want to Let's jump on? into 26 because they're definitely about to get a three-hour episode. 28. 28. <laughs> Sorry. No <laughs> problem. All right. So chapter 28 was, was not a long chapter. No. Uh, it's called... And Fo- thank you for that, RJ. I needed a break. You needed a little <laughs> I needed break. A little you needed a little break. break. <laughs> <laughs> chapter 28 is called Footprints in Air. Mm-hmm. And the chapter symbol is a tree branch and two leaves. And this is a naive chapter, and you predicted that it would be a naive chapter. Look at me being so. right. Look at you. I'm so right all the time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Actually, okay, we're not going to. No, don't, don't play me. <laughs> don't play me. Play yes, Lotto. Yes, Keith. Don't play right. me. Play Lotto. All the time. time. I'm literally right all the time. All the time. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> naive Land and Moiraine, they arrive at White Bridge, and apparently they get there only like a day or two after. So, Rand and Matt had just left. Mm. And they're only like a day or two behind them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so Moraine is explaining how the coins work because Nynaeve is pestering her. Again, uh, you some know, more. <laughs> about like, how are you going to find my peoples? And he, she's like, you know, she's, so she's explaining one of them lost their coins, whatever, whatever. You yeah. know, she's explaining everything. Uh-huh. And she also tells Nynaeve that she will have to learn to control her temper. <laughs> during her training at mm. Tara Valon mm. because Nynaeve is you know she's yelling yeah. like she's literally literally yelling and yeah. so Maureen explains and so we, we're, we're getting tidbits we're learning more about the one power yeah how it works and things like because we haven't been in Maureen's head right right so we haven't been in, in anyone's head who it ha- has full control of their channeling yeah. power to know what it you know how it works how it works and everything so she says You can do nothing with the one power when emotion rules your mind. Accuracy. Facts. Facts. Hashtag facts. Statements that were made that are true. (laughs) (laughs) And it's interesting because it's like you really can't do anything. Nothing. Nothing. With anything. The one power. Nothing. Whatever, you know. You can't cook a good meal when you're angry. Right. Right. You can't do If emotions are ruling your mind, Uh it, it, you know, definitely clouds everything. Yep. You know, so yeah. I thought that was I thought that was solid advice right yeah. there. Yeah, that's advice. advice on being a human. That yeah, you know, yeah, for real, okay. for real. <laughs> but Nynaeve, you know, she's stubborn. She's you know, she was like thinking about ways to get rid of Moraine. Like, <laughs> <she's> like <laughs> I feel like Moraine can like, sense that too, though. Like, I see you, Heffa, <laughs> right over there trying to plot my demise. Right, 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 you right, know. Right, right. So as they approach White, you know, their journey towards White Bridge, it was silent for the most part. Land was being pensive and told Nynaeve, like, listen. You know, when we reach the Camelon Road and White Bridge, you need to just go back to the Two Rivers because this shit is too dangerous or whatever. Mm-hmm. Moraine is like, no, Lan, Nynaeve is part of the pattern. Moraine is a little pensive and she's sensing the Dark One touching mm-hmm. the world. Mm-hmm. And she says he's not fully touching mm-hmm. the world, mm-hmm. but she can sense little things or whatever. His funk is in the air. His funk is in the air. Mm-hmm. Um, when they get to White Bridge, they actually cross the, the White Bridge to go into White Bridge. Mm-hmm. Nynaeve is impressed, but she's, you know, she got to put on this facade mm-hmm. or or whatever. So once they get into White Bridge, they notice everything is fucked up. You know, buildings mm-hmm. are burned up or whatever because all that shit, because when, uh-huh. when the shit happened with the fade yeah. and Matt and Rand were running away, they were saying it was like they toppled an anthill. Everybody just started running yeah. and going crazy. Mm-hmm. So apparently this is the result of everybody running around going crazy. And some buildings was burned down. Uh, Moraine was talking to some of the town's folks and they were, you know, telling her what happened. Uh-huh. Most of them lied. You know, because <laughs> <laughs> what's their name? Bennett. What they ain't in it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so one person said that there was an overturned lamp, an overturned lamp that started a fire. One person said there was a man in the town meddling with the one power, and you know it's it's it's, it's past time for the Isidai to, to get involved. We need the red Aja <laughs> up in here, you know, post haste, you know. Get pooped, woo whoop, right? <laughs> Call your homegirls, right, 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 right. <laughs> Somebody said there was a riot by dark friends. <laughs> You know, I guess that was me, right? I was you leading was, the pack. You was, you was definitely down. I was. You was definitely. <laughs> I was in the mob down. with the dog. I'm friends. not gonna say you like put the gas to the matches, but you you brought one of the two. <laughs> you brought one of the. I two. either had the gas. You or had, I had the gas the or the matches. But I don't we don't know have which one. we don't have matches in this world. I'm just saying. They don't got matches. No. Oh, so you did a little flickering. Little... They lamps like they they rub two sticks together. Right. So you had either the left stick or the right stick. <laughs> I don't know which stick you had, but you definitely oh met up and y'all got the rubbing. Oh my okay. gosh. Somebody said there was an attack by bandits. 
you know, everybody who was who wanted to um, go to Cam- who's trying to go to Camelin to mm-hmm. see the false dragon. Uh, somebody said that there was some trouble that had mm-hmm. come down river on a boat. Uh huh. And you know, we know of a boat. We know of a that, boat that came down river. That did. Uh, called the spray. Mm-hmm. And you know, it do be. It do be. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so apparently <laughs> this boat, and we're gonna assume it's the spray. Sure. You know, sure. with you know, it, it do be the spray. It do be the spray. And apparently a mob got on the docks and tried to board the boat. <laughs> hey, no, that's right. And the boat fled. Like boat they, was like not they me. Cut its moorings, like they like, mm-hmm. let's go. We Once out. again, right. This boat is very used to fleeing. I just want to point that out. Well, it didn't say we're assuming that it's okay. the boat. I think it's a okay. great assumption. We oh, can thank assume you. that it, it okay. is Bale Dolman and mm-hmm. and and the spray. Mm-hmm. Uh one person said that there was a gleaming on the boat. Mm-hmm. And so Tom said he's gonna get that money, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, you know, Nynaeve is asking Moraine, like, do you think it was, you know, our people? And Moraine is like, listen. I don't know. Okay, right. like, right. like stop, me pest- off. stop pestering me. You finna get <laughs> beat up. <laughs> so, so they go into the same inn uh-huh. that the boys were at because they yeah. described the the, the, wall, the wall, the separated wall, yeah. or whatever. Which why? But anyway, I guess that's neither here nor there. Well, she's she's following. No, no. I mean, why does the so. inn have a divider in the middle of the room like that? So people can have privacy, purposely. So, like, if. You know, you want to have a meeting with somebody. You got to buy a room, honey. Oh. They don't know how to make money. So anyway, in your in your uh, end, okay. They don't, they don't end, know how to run. No, you want privacy? You buy a room. Got it. Got it. That's how the money is made, anyway. <laughs> so they they get a meal mm. at this inn, and Delish. they <laughs> <laughs> and they eat they eat they eat their meal, and um, while they're finishing their meal, like an officer comes in, a red uniform soldier. Mm-hmm comes in and land looked at him and was like, Psh. <laughs> like this joke right right look at this bullshit yeah yeah little armor made of copper he's look like at this bullshit. useless look at this right <laughs> idiot so the soldier is like scanning the room or whatever and sees land in them and he goes up to land and he's like you know what are you what are you what are you doing here where y'all going what's your right. purpose license here? the registration right Step basically out of sh- the car. shines the, the flashlight right. on the face you got a weapon on you i know a lot right. of you are yeah you smoke a crack yeah, yeah. <laughs> You smoking crack, boy? Yeah, You're that's dying? what happened. To, that's what happened to me, girl. Girl, that's what happened to me. They Lord. literally asked us if we had crack. You got crack? Not like, cocaine, did you just not crack? crack. Like, it's like literal crack. We are literally it's on our way to go party with Whitney Houston right now. We got no, but she said crack. crack is whack. Crack is whack. She makes too much money for crack. She makes too much money it for was crack. Cocaine, honey. But clearly, I don't want to make enough money because well, clearly kind of we had crack it? in the car. It was a Pathfinder. We had crack. Crack in the Pathfinder? Crack in the Pathfinder. <laughs> anyway, I digress because yes. we could we could talk about um That'll be a very special episode. Illegal traffic color. stops. <laughs> yeah. We could talk about illegal traffic oh, stops girl. and racial profiling on another yep. episode. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> they wanted to know, you know, what you doing, where you going, what your business is here, how long you staying. And so Land was like, yo, I'm leaving as soon as I finish my ale. And was like drinking his ale slow. Like, mm-hmm. I am in no rush because your right. ass is here. And then he looked at the soldier and was like, the light illumined good Queen Morgays. Mm. So I guess, you know, that kind of made the mm-hmm. the uh, the officer kind of like, oh, okay. All right, all right then. You know, right. like. <laughs> so that's the, that's the, uh. When you get pulled over and you show the PBA card, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that was the PBA card. That was the PBA card. So he showed his PBA card, and um, for those who don't know, that's the uh, Police Benevolent Association. That's yeah. the that's the union um, of the. Uh, I don't know what it is everywhere else, but in New York and for NYPD, yeah, the their union is called the Police Benevolence Association, and they have their PBA card and. If they're off duty or whatever, mm-hmm. and they get pulled over, you know they can, or they give out they give out the cards they to their families. They give out cards to friends and family. So, yeah, they my, get like a certain amount or something like that. Yeah, so I I would get them, and I would actually get an an, an SBA card, the Sergeant's Benevolent Association, because my oh. dad was a sergeant. Okay. He was, yeah, he's a retired NYPD sergeant, and but my dumb ass would forget to pull the card out. <laughs> I've been I remember I got pulled over one time. <laughs> And it was it was totally illegal. It was totally trash. Uh huh. So they pulled me over. I had just bought. My, I had a brand new Hyundai Sonata. And uh-huh. you know when Hyundai Sonatas? I don't even remember. But 
uh, when Hyundai Sonatas first came out, it was, well, the new, it was a new body style of the mm-hmm. Hyundai Sonata. Sorry, not when they first came out. When the new body style of the uh-huh. Hyundai Sonata came out in 2002. Okay. It looked like, a Jaguar at the time. Like the headlights oh, were the very headlights. similar yeah, yeah, to yeah, the Jaguar. Yeah. So it was looked real sleek. I had literally just bought the car like that day mm-hmm. or maybe the day before or whatever. So it's shiny, it's fresh and new or whatever. And I was in Queens visiting one of my girlfriends and it was late and I'm going back home. It's late. It's like wild late, like one in the morning, two in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting at a red light. You know, I have my indicator on the light turns green I pull off and make a right turn. As soon as I make the right turn, whoop, 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 I get pulled over. Mm. And so they claim I ran a red light. It's like, you blew through the light and you made this wide turn. So they gave me two tickets for running the red light <laughs> and for a, a, a unsafe lane change. <laughs> unsafe. Mm. So, of course, I, I'm so I'm scared, right? Because mm-hmm. traffic stops kill black people, right? Uh-huh. So I'm not thinking about anything. I have the damn CGC, the... SGA, SGA, SBA card, and I never pull it out. I never mention that my dad is, and he was still on the job. He wasn't retired yet. Mm. So my dad is on the job. And the precinct that I was in is a precinct that he used to work at as a sergeant. Oh, so so he probably name. knew the officers that pulled right, me over. And right. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I right. was so fucking scared. And, um, so they gave me the tickets or whatever, and I called my dad like the next day, and he was like, "Why you didn't call me? Why you didn't? You know, I'm like, Dad, yeah. I'm, I was scared. It was like two in the morning. Right. I'm thinking I'm gonna die because that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> to us, you know. And so he basically just, you know, told 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 me how to fight it or whatever, and I fought it, and the cops didn't show up to court because it was bogus. It was bogus, yeah, it was bogus. Yeah, yeah. and and so the, it got dropped. But anyway, I I digress. <laughs> Lamb pulls out his PBA card and, <laughs> when he says, you know, when he says the light illumine good Queen more gaze. And so the the soldier's taken aback a little bit or whatever. And he's like, All right, yeah, see, see that you do. Too many strangers around these days for the good of the Queen's peace, you know, and then he leaves or whatever. So now Nynaeve is like, listen, where are we going? Are we going to the boat? Right. What, what are we doing? Like she's pestering everybody or whatever and Moraine is like you know first I gotta find the one that I can be sure mm-hmm. of of finding and that person is to the north of us mm-hmm. so I'm thinking that's Perrin mm. right because Perrin and Egwene were off their path in the wilderness and they were no and they had to they were trying to travel south and, right. and east to get back on the on the way to get to yeah. Cayman so I'm thinking you know, parents still has his coin. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because remember, Matt and Rand gave their coin they gave up. their coin up mm-hmm. to Bale Dolman yeah. and they didn't get it back. Nope. But she said she, because of the connection with the coin, even though they didn't have their coins, she mm-hmm. could tell that the boys were there mm-hmm. in the room. She could feel it. Yeah. Or whatever. And so Nynaeve was like, well, which two was here? And, you know, and of course she doesn't know. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, she just knows she gave out three coins. She has a connection right. to three coins and she could feel, you know, but she doesn't know who's who or whatever. And Nynaeve is basically harassing her or whatever. Lan notes that they definitely were afraid because there was a half man here. So Lan can sense mm-hmm. that there was a, the, yeah, he yeah. Can, you know, cause that's what one of the things that warders can do. They can sense yeah. shadow spawn or whatever. And so Nynaeve is like, all right, yeah, I want to find a boys too, but you never say anything about Egwene. And I, I think it's so crazy because th- shouldn't she know that Moraine did not give Egwene a coin. Like, Moraine gave the boys coins Mm -hmm. and that was her, like, that was like, that was her assignment. (laughs) That was like the, um, you know, the thing that Apple has where you, Oh, the, the air tag. That was air tag. She gave them air tags. Right. Mm -hmm. Egwene didn't get an air tag. Right. So she can't go into find me and find, (laughs) (laughs) she can't find Egwene. And like, I don't understand why Nynaeve doesn't understand this. Like it's, 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 she was getting on my nerve. With that, (laughs) listen, you know what I'm saying? Mm Mm-hmm. So, Basically, you know, she Maureen is like, listen, I want to find Egwene as well, but I got to do what I can, you know, right. De- don't don't get it twisted. I got to find Egwene, you know, mm-hmm. because she has too much ability mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with the one power. I ain't mm-hmm. letting that go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the will weaves as the will wills. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much how the the chapter ends. They leave and they leave, you know, after they finish eating and everything, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they get up and they walk away. Mm. and they leave Whitebridge. Mm. And that's the end of the chapter. 
Okay. So, what do you have for us? So, let's give me, I'll, I'll give you one light one. And okay. then one. Oh, Lord, let's see if I can answer one it. One heavier one. Okay. <laughs> so, this one I wanted to kind of discuss a little bit last week, but we definitely ran out of time. Mm-hmm. And it was this idea that, you know, we see Rand and Matt when they get to the White Bridge Mm -hmm. and they're in awe of it and they're trying to figure out what it's made of. And Mm -hmm. is it glass? Is it metal? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, polyurethane? I don't know. They're just like, (laughs) wow, this structure is so magnificent. And Mm -hmm. they're talking about how it must be from this age and, Mm -hmm. you know, blah, Mm -hmm. blah, blah. And then we see Nynaeve who's like, bitch, this is crazy. Right. Like we should be walking on this. It's gonna break. Right, right. It's glass. Oh, no, it's not glass. It's metal. This is crazy. Right. So this to me kind of rivals the idea of, you know, what we have in our world in the seven mm-hmm. wonders. Okay. Right? Like, you know, people get to it and they're in awe of it. Right. right? They can't explain it. Mm-hmm. They can't place when it was made. And right. So I want to ask you, and fun, you know, have you been able to visit any of the Seven Wonders, and what was that experience like? No, I have (laughs) not. No, really? I have not seen any wonder. I can tell you what was wondrous to me, what was, what stood out to me. When Uh I was seven, my mom took me to Europe, Mm -hmm. and we went on like a, like a seven city tour. Oh. And I was extremely fascinated Mm -hmm. by the leaning tower of Pisa. Ah. I was afraid of it. Oh, that it was going to topple? Because I'm like, why is everybody so calm? This (laughs) building is lean. It's clearly falling. It's clearly going to fall. It's going to fall on top of us. Mm -hmm. And why are we walking towards it? This is not safe. Right, you want to take pictures under it? Right, I don't understand what's happening. What is really going on here? And so that was the only, like, that's the only memory I have of something that really amazed me. Uh You know, in my seven-year-old brain, I didn't understand this building that was leaning over because clearly any second now it was going to, it was going to, it was going to fall on our heads. So I I have to remind myself what all the the uh, wonders are, and I know they change. Do they change? They do change because really? there's 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 the seven wonders of the ancient world, and then there's uh-huh. the seven wonders of the world. But I think they change based on something. I don't know. Okay. So in doing a quick Google search, right? Because it is even something here that says. New Seven Wonders of the World, right? New Seven Wonders, And that wow. is from Britannica. Let me click that one. Are the pyramids still on the list? If they ever take the pyramids off, I'm going to call the yeah. whole list a scam. Yeah. It's yeah. a scam. So we have... We will riot if the... Baby. If the pyramids to no are not end, on the list. To no end. So we have the Great Wall of China. Mm-hmm. We have the uh, Chichen Itza, which is um, the Mayan city. Mm-hmm. We have the Petra. I didn't realize the Petra was on there in Jordan. We have Machu Picchu. Mm-hmm. We have Christ the Redeemer. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have the Colosseum, which mm-hmm. I am. I, I, okay. So I've been to the Colosseum. Okay. That is a seven that's, wonder. Okay. Yeah. Yes. We, w- we went to the Colosseum. Yeah. That was a part of our tour. <laughs> Our European tour. Yeah, we we definitely went to the Coliseum. The Taj Mahal. This is not an accurate list because I don't see the pyramids. But if the if the oh yeah. If the Coliseum is on a list, I've we I'm, we went to the Coliseum. And listen to friend for listeners, right? You hear us struggling, right? So just drop in just the Just let chat us know what we're missing. What we're missing, <laughs> right? Because it's okay, let me just Because the Google search engine is not Yeah, searching. it's not it's not giving me what I thought it was giving me. I don't see are the pyramids considered actual an actual wonder that's why i said i think it changes that's so interesting so it might be a seventh wonder of the ancient world but then what's the difference okay yeah so i pull up the seven wonders of the ancient worlds you Mm -hmm. get the great pyramid of giza Mm -hmm. you get hanging gardens of babylon Mm -hmm. you get temple of artemis at Ephesus. Mm-hmm. You get the statue of Zeus at Olympia. Mm-hmm. You get the mausoleum at the 
Halicarnassus. Mm-hmm. You get the Colossus of Rhodes. You mm-hmm. get the Lighthouse of Alexandria. Yes. So those are the ancient of the, the, the seven wonders of the ancient world. Okay. So then there are seven wonders, I guess, of the modern world, I guess. And um, that would be get the Colosseum in Italy, Petra in Jordan, Chichen Itza in Mexico, Christ the Redeemer in Brazil, Machu Picchu in Peru, Taj Mahal in India, and the Great Wall in China. Mm. So those are considered the current seven wonders of the world. So now I need to figure out what makes a location or a, a structure a, a wonder. Somebody, some a group of people, right? A group sits of people around, got together. Yeah, they have a Zoom meeting and they decide. What it is. Oh, that's interesting. But so you said you've been to at least the Coliseum. I've definitely been to the Coliseum when I was seven. How was that? Well, you were seven. I was seven. So I have to, <laughs> you know, I have to, I have to do another, I have to do another trip. There's lots, there's lots of places I want to see. Uh-huh. I just renewed my passport and I'm just waiting oh, for it. Oh, so we're out. Well, I have yet to, I've yet to see any of the, the wonders. Not I, even a Grand Canyon. Is that considered a wonder? No. And I've, I haven't I've, seen, the Grand, I've seen the Grand Canyon. I haven't. Um, I've been there. Um, we should, I mean, it's right there. I think you know. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not. It's not. It's definitely. Easy, oh my gosh, I have not make. been to the Grand Canyon. I'm confusing it with um, Niagara Falls. You think about Niagara Falls? I was thinking about Niagara oh. Falls. <laughs> I was like right there. Well, actually, I'm so tired. It's not right there. I'm so tired. The Grand but Canyon, baby, is in a totally tall, different time ne- zone. Yes. <laughs> never mind. Whoops. My bad. I haven't been in Niagara Falls either. That's easy. It's easy. You can, it's you can, do. you know, that's a road trip. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we should do it. Let's do it. Let's do I'm it. I'm with it. Let's go to Toronto. Okay. Because that's, it's better. Yeah. It's better. It's definitely better. The, and we have um, some, I, I'm sure we have some listener friend, friend listeners in Toronto. Tell us, tell oh, us the dope spots. Yes. Because when I went to Toronto, it was very much on a like, let's just go have fun. And so, you know, we just, shot around in toronto and then we went up to um niagara falls so yeah so we we did all right so we're doing it white and color yep 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 it's gonna be a white and color road trip we'll have our podcaster with us so you won't miss an episode yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we'll be live from whatever live from whatever city we're in yeah but we i definitely need to put some of these on my to-go list because i like to travel yeah I mean, the act of traveling is cumbersome. Mm-hmm. Getting mm-hmm. on a plane, going through TSA, and you mm-hmm. know me and TSA. I done had a, a traumatizing experience recently with um, the travel security mm. authority or whatever their thing stands for. But I'm ready to get back out there. Is it transportation? I don't know. Sec- whatever the TSA folk. <laughs> and so I want to go to the Coliseum, and I definitely want to do the pyramids. So. That might have to be our next trip for real, for real, because I don't know. But well, I'm ready for the road trip whenever you want to do it. Yeah. So let's That's get easy. That we plans. could just We could just pick a date and just. Yeah. Drive up. And just go. Yeah. So now let's get a little deeper. Uh oh. Let's talk about this thing called anger. Ugh. <laughs> exactly. Just like that. Okay. What was a time when anger got the best of you? How did you handle it? What did you learn about yourself? And how do you view the purpose of anger in your life today? So here's a little known fact All about right. Char. Oh, right. I love little known facts. Char has a temper. <laughs> that has been suppressed. Uh, oh, okay. Got you. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm so serious. She cracked yeah, yeah, yeah. up. <laughs> like who Sean? no I, I do no i i was teased a lot as a child mm-hmm. you know bullied or whatever and i would misdirect my anger mm. so i would you know mm-hmm. be bullied and teased and whatever and and be passive you know and and not speak up for myself and not whatever whatever and then i'm out of the situation and something triggers me and now i'm cursing somebody else out Oh, yeah. Somebody that has nothing to do with yeah. anything. And so it, as a child, it was like a known thing mm-hmm. for me. You know, everyone, oh, that's just Sharnice having having one of, her, one of her outbursts. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. This is what I do. Right? And the unfortunate thing of that, because it's like crying wolf, is I'm trying to figure out how I want to share this story. When I was 11, 
I was in a situation where we were on vacation in Florida and we were in the hotel and it was one of those hotels where the, our hotel room door opened to outside and our room faced the back of the hotel where the pool was. Okay. And so I was in the pool, you know, and at any time my dad could just open the door and look and see me in the pool or whatever. So I'm in the pool and like I said, I was really, I was always really, really, really skinny Mm -hmm. um, all throughout my, you know, childhood and through my twenties. So I'm a child. I'm really skinny. My bathing suit doesn't fit properly. It's, it's loose. Mm -hmm. I was a very, very, very skinny child. Um, crackhead status, if you will. Maybe that's why when mm. the cops pulled me over, they stop. Bye. Say, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and so my bathing suit like, like fell off. Mm-hmm. And there were two little boys in the pool, and they started chasing me around the pool, and like grabbing my butt and trying oh to touch gosh. my titties and yeah. And so my temper was full on. 150 percent temper Mm -hmm. and i was trying to fuck those boys up i bet like i was i was literally trying to like drown these little motherfuckers Mm -hmm. and so i'm punching the shit out of them i'm trying and they laughing they they this it's a they having a wing dang doodle they're laughing they're you know they're getting a kick out of me being angry Mm -hmm. and and you're and we're in a pool so you can't run so fast so it's like a slow motion chase you know <laughs> so they're chasing me around the pool and they're laughing and when i and like every once in a while i'll turn around and i'm, I'm trying to you know dunk their heads under the water because i'm trying to drown these motherfuckers like mm-hmm. i'm like and i'm hitting them and then my dad walks out of the, the hotel room mm-hmm. sees me punching on these boys and he immediately yells shawnee's get your ass up in here mm-hmm. So I get out of the pool and I go upstairs and they're like, I don't know what happened, mister. We were just playing nice and she just started hitting us. Oh, wow. And so my dad believed that story Mm. because I was known to have a temper. Wow. And it's so crazy. I didn't tell him the truth of it until I was an adult. Oh, wow. And he's like, oh, my God, why didn't you tell? I was like, nobody asked. Oof. Nobody asked me. I got a beaten. I got a beaten. Oh, yeah. And I was placed on punishment Mm -hmm. for the rest of the... So my punishment, because we're on vacation. So he's like, well, I can't punish you. We're on vacation. We're here. We're going to Disney World, right? right? So the punishment was I couldn't go in the pool anymore. That was my punishment for the rest of the trip. Oh. No more pool time for me, you know, because we were on, you know, we're on vacation. Yeah. You can't just, you know, we go to... It's a small world after all, and I'm gonna stand outside and wait for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> stand outside the gate, right? right. Everybody's just having fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, y'all learned a little bit about man me today. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so I have, I have, um, I have not had an outburst per se mm-hmm. in a very long time, like years, because I am learning to not be so passive. Mm-hmm. and to advocate for myself and to speak up for myself and to use my voice yeah. and you know to 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 say you know I'm not I'm not comfortable in this situation yeah. or, you know I don't want to do this I don't like that you know instead of just you know letting somebody take advantage of me or mm-hmm. or letting things happen that I don't want to happen and then being angry about it later and then taking out on someone else yeah. you know I haven't I haven't done that in many 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 years so, so is it, so how we're in a therapy session right now? y'all. <laughs> <laughs> no, cause it reminds me of this quote that I read some time ago that said, um, when you don't heal what hurt you, you will bleed on someone who didn't cut you. Mm, cause hurt people hurt people. Cause hurt people hurt people. Mm-hmm. Right. So is it that you have learned to suppress the anger Mm. Or have you honestly dealt with the purpose of anger in your life? Because I think it's a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. I, I think I think there are definitely instances where I'm just suppressing it. Uh-huh. And I think there's definitely times where I'm being reflective and uh-huh. I'm, you know, you know, the whole growth thing is right. happening. Yeah. You know, you know what they you know what they say. God ain't through with me yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still here. A work in progress. I'm a work in progress. Consistent. 
yeah. work in progress, yeah. which is yeah. awesome because I'm just trying to be the best version of 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 Shar moment by moment that I could be. Yeah. yeah. And not be so hard on myself. Yeah. If I stumble, mm-hmm. you know, and say, OK, all right, you may have fucked up a little bit yesterday, but you know what? Today is today. So, yeah. you know, let's learn from that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and move forward. Mm. I like that. I think that's very uh, inspirational, Aww. if you will. Because again, it's just a it's just a constant reminder to be gentle with yourself. Yes, right. Yes, that's the thing that I think Give a lot of grace. people miss when they're going through life and they're going through things, and you know, uh, like we say all the time, life be life in. Yeah, and you you fall into these old habits that you work hard to pull yourself out of because they're habitual, mm-hmm. right? And maybe you haven't cleanly broken this cycle or maybe you revert back to something that's comfortable, yeah. right? For me, as an Aries, right, anger is very comfortable. I'm very comfortable with being angry. I can sit You're in fire anger. Sign, I'm a fire sign. Mm-hmm. But I'm the most fiery motherfucking fire <laughs> sign. Right? Like Aries, right? Mm-hmm. God of war. Mm-hmm. Right? Like we are we are fighters. And we I'm an air angry. sign. Angry. Yeah. I'm very nomadic, very, very peaceful, yeah. you know. And so and I think that's why I love I, I'm so close with a lot of, you know, the air signs because it's such a balance to me mm-hmm. right where i'm always well see like, our air can either feed your fire yeah or put it out yeah 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 yeah, yeah right because yeah. air needs because uh, fire needs oxygen yep right yep yep or it's or it snuffs it out or it snuffs it out yeah. so it's it's i always find myself around a lot of my father is an aquarius you know really? so like, yeah and baby he feeds he feeds, <laughs> he feeds he's feeding he the fire the flames and he watches it burn down villages and he'd be like that's my girl <laughs> That's the one right there. That's oh my, my baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's so funny. Yes, man. That's but so um funny. and my dad is an Aquarius. Oof. So two Aquarians. Yeah. And his dad was an Aquarius. Oh, it's that's too much Aquarius. So the, just the three of us just <laughs> and my grandmother Aww. is an Aries. Was an Aries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And so she was surrounded. Uh-huh. Her husband, her son, and her granddaughter. Uh-huh. All Aquarius. <laughs> Woo! Baby! <laughs> they had a lot of moments. Yeah, I'm just going to tell all, you. We all had a lot of moments. They, it did. was a lot of moments. I, and, I knew, and I knew when when I was really stressing her the fuck out. Because yeah. I could see it in her eyes. I could see it in her face. Yeah. I stressed my grandmother the fuck out. <laughs> because I was spoiled. Yeah. Especially by my grandfather. More more mostly by my grandfather. They both spoiled me, but mm-hmm. my grandfather most of all. And I got away with murder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they had a very traditional relationship, meaning my grandfather was the lord of the house, I guess. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know, whatever what he said, that's that that was law. And yeah. so I oh my God, I caused so much havoc and I would just Run up to my grandfather, poke my little lip out. <laughs> and, Not the little pout. Yes, little Ooh. pout. And I would get whatever I wanted. And my grandmother would just, oh, if looks oh. could kill. Mm. But you know what? This this kind of reminds me of Nynaeve. And, you know, Nynaeve seems to have a lot of anger. And seems. <laughs> <laughs> so Nynaeve is angry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's very angry. And talking about giving yourself grace. Yeah. We haven't been in Nynaeve's head a lot, no. but we've been in her head enough to know that she feels so responsible yeah. for her her people. Yeah. And I definitely can see her internally just beating herself up. Yep. Because she done lost everybody now. Yeah. She don't know where any of her people are. Yep. Yep. And yep. she's like, fuck. Mm-hmm. I had one job. I just had one fucking <laughs> that job. That was to keep Emmonsville together. <laughs> yeah. And so that's why and she, she's taking it out on Maureen. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Leaning like, so what you, you ain't said nothing about Egwene. You. What about Egwene? Right. You talking about the boys. I want to find the boys too. But what about Egwene? Right. Not remembering like, hello, Egwene right. don't have a coin. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Egwene uh-huh. don't have an air tag. Right. You know? <laughs> 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 so you know so i guess like my on the spot sis be steadfast is not need give yourself some fucking grace yeah give yourself grace yeah mm-hmm. this shit is not your fault mm-hmm. this shit is not your fault 
you can't control everything, yeah. Nynaeve. You cannot control everything. Yep. Because guess what? The will weaves as the will wills. <laughs> hey! <laughs> But it's true. It's very it's true. true. It's the universe true. is going universe. The universe is going to do what it shit, do. Shit is going to do what it do. And, yep. You know, every you single time. Every single time. You know, you just got to, you have to adjust as, as shit happens. Like, I yeah. can't control that. You know, what can I, what can I control? Right. You know. What's the, what is the prayer? God grant me the. The serenity to. to accept the things that I cannot, cannot change. The courage to change the things that I that. can. And yes. the wisdom. Wisdom. The Wisdom. Wisdom. Knowledge plus understanding. Baby, we're not doing that on today. <laughs> we're not doing that on today. Shout out to the nation. Going to the oh, earth. don't take me back. Don't take me back. Don't take me back. The wisdom to know the difference yes. between the two. Yes. And as she is the wisdom, I think she got more wisdoming to do. She got a little bit more wisdom. She got a little bit more wisdoming yeah. that she needs to do. Yeah. Yeah. But um, speaking of sis, be steadfast. Mm-hmm. Since you, you threw yours in there and we're obviously gonna talk and that about was the just same. off the cuff though right we're gonna talk about the same person let me just dive into mine okay hi my need you always gotta yeah gotta come in real sweet you yeah. know i get it i swear i do as an aries it took me a really long time to understand that anger was controlling my life too it was driving my decisions and causing me to make some really questionable ones more often than not And I'm here to tell you that anger is valid, just like all the other emotions. But more than that, it's a tool, right? It's to be used by you and not the other way around. Mm. And if you are using anger to your benefit, the energy of anger can be used as a motivator to propel you out of circumstances that can truly pull you under. Mm. But if you're allowing it to use you, you will find yourself deeper down the rabbit hole of these very same circumstances. Anger is the most dangerous and beneficial emotion that humans can tap into. I hope you learn to understand that and realize that your anger is misguided, causing you to be mistrustful and wary of even those who can help you by your own recognition. Mm. Learn to trust yourself and not the anger guiding you. You will not only feel better, but you will make better decisions for yourself and subsequently the people around you. Mm. Sis, you said a word. You said a word. Where's the collection plate, yo? Where is Here we go. Here we go. Is that the collection plate? Yes. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Sis. I'll be here all night. Sis. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. Anger, Anger is, is a tool. It's a tool to be used. To be used and not the other way around. Yeah. Motherfucker. <laughs> Is my journal. Like, that shit down. Because anger is not bad. Oh it's not. Anger is all, not. All bad. emotions are valid, like you said. All emotions are valid. Yeah. Anger is not. Anger. You have emotions. Every, you have are every energy. right to be angry about emotions, whatever makes exactly. you angry. Exactly. Emotions yeah. are energy. Yeah. Yes. What did I say before? Energy comes to you neutral. It is not good. It is not bad. It that just applies. Is. It just is. Yep. And it's the feeling that you subscribe to those emotions Mm -hmm. that causes them to erupt yes right that causes you to lean on them or use them to start making decisions Mm -hmm. or to fall into them right Mm -hmm. other than that they are tools Mm -hmm. they come to you neutral they come to alert you right Mm -hmm. fear emotions that's an alert Mm -hmm. anger emotion that's an alert it's a call to action action. Mm -hmm. and depending on how you interpret those feelings Mm -hmm. will decide how you Make your next step. Mm-hmm. But it's not good and it's not bad. Mm-hmm. It's, it's you know, it's not something where anger is bad. You don't feel those things. Or anger right. is great. I feel them all the time. It just is. It, yes. It just yes. is. And I think when we start to realize that your emotions are just energy that come to you mm-hmm. to to show you what's going on around you, to show mm-hmm. you what's going on internally, mm-hmm. to show you, to alert you, to guide you, mm-hmm. then we can start using our emotions in a healthier way. Mm-hmm. So that was it. That was, I'm getting off my woo-woo soapbox. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, meditate, people, mm-hmm. and and drink alkaline water. Yes, <laughs> I like essential. <Accenture>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was dope. Yeah, that yeah. was really, 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 really. I don't have dope. any water and shade. Okay. I would just throw that out. I don't think anybody did anything particularly mm-hmm. shade worthy. Right. This go around. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I'm trying to think real quick. I'm thinking about um, the way of the leaf grandson. Aram. Uh, Aram. Mm-hmm. But he was just trying to get some. He Vakuch. trying to get some pussy. Vakuch. I said to pussy. pussy. I said pussy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, trying, he's trying to smash. He's trying to smash. He's, you know, a yeah. typical young yeah, adult. Young, young, yeah, young so man. That's yeah. Not, it's not worth being red. Yeah. You know, Egwene taking the beads. She just wants some attention. Her man not around. Yeah. You yeah. know, so she's not worth gifts. being red. Yeah, you yeah. know. So, yeah, I think everybody's pretty safe from the shade today. Okay. Yes. All right, all right, all right. So, what I would like to do, yes. if it's okay with you, yeah, yeah. let's revisit some of your older predictions. Do that shit. Do that shit. <laughs> do it. Do that shit. Well, before we do that, yeah. do you have any predictions from these two chapters? Okay. I prediction. <laughs> Perrin and Egwene are about to find themselves dancing with some Trollocs or some Fates. And we're going to see the power of the wolves finally as they protect Perrin and Elias. Okay. And I think this encounter is going to throw them off their path to Camelin. Okay. So we're not gonna we're not gonna they're, they're not, not gonna, gonna make, make it? it to Camelin at when Maureen is there. Okay. So Maureen and is on her way to Camelin. Rand and them is on their way to Camelin. Something's gonna happen with Rand too. That's just they too out in the open. But I think Maureen said She's going to help the one she can find. So I think she's going to try to find Perrin. Oh, she's going to try to track him. Yeah. Right. So she's not she's, going to Camelin. She said, she right. said somebody she is north of that. her. Yeah. She doesn't know that it's Perrin. Yeah, yeah. But we know that it's yeah. Perrin. Yes. Yeah. So let me add to that prediction then now that I realize that she's going to find. I just yeah. remembered that as you said that. Yeah. They're definitely going to run into some Trollocs or Fae's or Mergers of Dracar or whatever. Right. And we're going to see the wolves in action. Right. But we're finally going to see Moiraine get the bus in. Okay. It's going to be new lightning out the sky. <laughs> I cannot wait. <laughs> oh, wait. I love it. Okay. Also, Matt and Rand will make it to Camlin, mm -hmm. but they'll be forced to leave before Moiraine can catch up with them because either Trollocs or Fae's or an Israelite white. Oh, okay, so no meet up in no meet up in no Camelin. reunion in no Camelin. reunion in Camelin. Remember, they're not meeting until the end of the book. Right, the reunion is, a, is chapter fifty three. Right, chapter fifty three and fifty five, whatever. One of them. Fifty three is the last chapter. No, so it's gonna be fifty two. Fifty two. Okay. 52. <laughs> <laughs> and Nynaeve will make it to Tarvalon and will initially fail her first test to become an Aes Sedai because nothing fucking comes easy, especially when you're dealing with the emotion of anger. That shit will cause you to fail. A lot. She's okay. gonna fail that first test. Okay. But if she's an Aries, like I think she is, like call me Nakomi. <laughs> hey, says I miss you. Like, she, like call me Nakomi. Thinks that she is, then she gonna pass that shit. Sex time around. Second Flying time. colors. Okay. And I can assume that you have all of these written down because I did not pick up my pen. I do. Okay. I will share the doc with you. Please share the doc. I <laughs> shall. All right. So y'all heard the. Kiva's asinine predictions. That was so flat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't think it was, it was so flat. flat. I think it was perfect. It was Alicia think, Keys. And I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> no one. No, no one. No. <laughs> it was flat, baby. <laughs> I liked it. I we we got to take a clip of that and like, we got take one of the good ones because that one <laughs> that one wasn't it. <laughs> All right, so let us know. Let us know mm -hmm. what y'all think about mm -hmm. that. And let's revisit. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's have some fun. Let's go back in time. So Kiba has been making predictions since the beginning. Mm hmm And so we're going to go way back uh -huh. to episode one. Okay. And I'm only reading predictions that we have not confirmed as either being true or false. Got you. So you <laughs> predicted. Moiraine is a descendant or reincarnation of the dragon's wife, and she is here to set shit off. <laughs> She's about to release old boy from the mountain, and they about to go to war for real, for real, because <laughs> she needs her lick back. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we still going with that? Um, are you withdrawing this prediction, or are we going to leave it here to see if it gets confirmed? How many opportunities will I have to withdraw a prediction? You can withdraw it anytime you want. I will I will sustain that prediction for the moment. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Episode two, you said there is a reason why the younger guys are seeing it. And you were talking about the fade. Uh -huh. We didn't know it was a fade at the time. Right. Um, it reminds me of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah. 
when she couldn't get her powers until she was 16 and mm-hmm. didn't even know she was a witch until she woke up and was yeah, floating that, over her wow. bed. Uh-huh. It's giving, these kids are getting some kind of power since mm-hmm. they are in or around the same age that is allowing them to see the dark one. Mm-hmm. Further proof that the Dragon Reborn is probably really out there popping off. Oh. So you thought that they had powers and that's why they're able to see. I guess we could say that that's true that they have powers and that's why they were able to see the fade so everybody can see a fade everybody can see a fade so that's not true your prediction is not true first of all <laughs> i should see how she looking at me right it's now it's not yo. true right now so we it's, leave it so you leave it i need to reword it that's all because i think it has been confirmed that they all three because they're the same age uh-huh and because they, they have the ability to channel um, all, you think all three boys have the ability to channel? I do. Okay. I think Perry is just a punk. Okay. I don't think we, we need to add that. What you mean? I don't think you've ever made that prediction that all three boys have the ability to channel. Really? Yeah. So in They case- can all touch the source. Two of the three are false dragons, if you will. We're adding that to the sheet. Okay. Oh, okay. So we're going to leave that one alone mm-hmm, then. Mm-hmm. All right. Episode three. Yeah. You got a few from episode three. Uh-huh. You said, whatever Moraine needs the boys to do, they will do as payment for healing Tam. So I guess that's not... Because with her giving them the coins. Mm-hmm. So I guess we can we can knock that out because we know the only reason why she gave them the coins because it was... To track to them. To track them. So what are, we, what are we saying? You said, whatever Moraine needs the boys to do... Uh-huh. They will do with the coins. You said with the coins. Whatever Maureen needs the boys with the coins to do, uh-huh. they will do as payment for healing team. Okay, so that was not accurate. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> also from episode three, you said Maureen Sadai is there because she knew that she knew the danger that was coming. One more time. Uh, Maureen Sadai is there uh-huh. in Emmonsfield. Yes. Because she knew the danger that was coming. Oh, that's I accurate. I think that's accurate. That's very can, right. Yeah. That's very correct. She knew what was coming. In fact, you should give me two checks. She didn't know it was going to happen that night, but I. But she knew it was coming. She knew what it was about to be. Give, you should yeah. give me two checks. I'm just There's saying. There's no way in my spreadsheet to give you two checks. I Sorry. think you should adjust your spreadsheet. It cannot be adjusted. Sorry. I think you should put a pivot chart and give me two checks. God grant you the serenity. Oh! To, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't make the anger to come out, girl. The things you cannot Don't change. Don't make the anger come out, girl. <laughs> All right. Also from that same episode, episode three, you said, I think Tam knew Trollocs. Hence why he went and got his sword. He was taking, accurate. He was taking them out and not shocked about them at all. Correct. Which means that he has battled them before. Yes, we true. haven't confirmed it, though. That is true. Because you believe that it's is true. true. Where in the text did we did we say that that's true? Well, he talked about being in the war in his fever dream. He didn't mention Trollocs in a fever dream. He talked about Aiel. It doesn't matter. What does that matter? You specifically said Trollocs. You can leave I it if you want. New tro- I, it's not confirmed. Okay. Listening from friend listeners. <laughs> tell, tell us what y'all think. Right. Because I that think one. that one is correct. I think it's not confirmed. Okay. <laughs> You didn't say it's incorrect, so therefore, I'm never gonna, of course, I know, I know everything. I know you know everything. So I'm not going to say whether it's and correct so, or not unless we it's been proven already from what we've read thus far. Listen to friend, friend, listeners, chapters, whatever chapter we on. Yeah, I just slide into this or whatever. All right, Lan and Tam are descendants of the 100 army that was mentioned in the Dragon Mount prologue, which would also explain why Tam was telling the story and no one else. We could put we a pin know. in that one. We don't know if that's true or not. One of the three boys, so you originally said one of the three boys, and I'm assuming it's Rand, since he's our main character right now, has the one power in him. Mm-hmm. But now you're believing that all three of them. I think so if we, so if we know, so I think Rand is the, oh, my brain want to say savior reborn so bad. The dragon reborn. The dragon reborn. Mm-hmm. And I think all three of them have the ability to, you know, channel. Mm-hmm. So are you withdrawing this one? Because you're saying only one of the three boys now has the one power in him now at that moment was that the point where they were running from the dracar and he channeled that was chapter seven so yeah they were still no that no they weren't even they hadn't even left they were still in emmonsville in chapter seven mm-hmm. see this is the problem with my memory and you want to go chapter back. 10 is leave taking chapter 10 is when okay. they actually left emmonsville yeah that was still just so we don't know we we didn't know at the time 
but we know now. And so I think that that is accurate. Not that you think we're confirming, not, not what we think, what we're surmising, what we're, you know, extrapolating. We have to confirm with hard evidence. Wow. That's what, that's what we're doing. Okay. We will learn along the way that Rand wields the power when he goes to use the sword and something mystical, magical happens. He hasn't, nothing mystical, magical has happened with his sword. No. Um, Rand is in trouble. He is the dragon reborn. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. You, you in danger. You in danger, girl. Statement of truth. <laughs> you in danger. So that hasn't been confirmed, but <laughs> that's, that's what you believe. The places where Rand was in his dreams is where they are going to traverse. That hasn't happened yet. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't. The story that Maureen told, so when she told the story of Manetherin. Uh-huh. Okay. The story that Maureen told was the origin stories of how the water and Aes Sedai relationship formed. Oh, we, yeah. We don't, we know, don't that know that yet. Rand's pops is going to catch up to them sooner rather than later since he is the only person left in the two rivers that knows where they are going. Do you still think Tam is going to catch up? I feel like we're not done with Tam. Okay. Rand will find more redheaded folks. Yeah, I think that's you true. You still think that's going to happen? Yeah. Rand and Tam will have a conversation. So if you think they're going to catch up, then... Then they're probably going to have a little chitty chat. Okay. Yeah. Tam will die at some point in the series. You still think that's true? Yeah, he can't stay alive. Okay. Rand will have to struggle with something deep and dark about himself as soon as things seem like they are okay. That is act. That has been proven through something the dreams. deep and dark about himself? Yes. Through the dreams? Yeah. As soon as seems things was seem, I don't think things things seem like they're okay yet. Okay, they're so not, we can they're put not a in a calm in space yet. We can put a pin. Okay, when Rand yelled, when Rand prayed for Bella to run, someone was yielding the power. Him, true, <laughs> accurate. Check, that's please. A, that's what we believe, but it hasn't been. Oh, it hasn't been explicitly stated. Gosh. Egwene will join the Red Aja when they get to Tarvalon, so that she can heal Rand from his taint and impending death. Rand is able to channel naturally. True. Not true, but you still believe it. True. It hasn't been. We don't know that she didn't, yes. didn't even get to Tarvalon. True. Oh my God. Statement of fact. I'm not changing it because we didn't get to Tarvalon. Oh, well, okay. Nynaeve is going to be an Aes Sedai too. True. This is true. This is true. Not sure how or when she would catch up to the group. She did. But the fact that Moraine mentioned unsuspecting Aes Sedai become wizards of their villages makes me believe that Homegirl is absolutely an Aes Sedai. So we're gonna we're gonna put a yes on that. Yes, one. thank you. Because she 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 can we know that she can she can channel and she did catch up with him. So yes, I would say that's correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Someone is going to want to go back home. It's sounding like Perrin. Yep, that may go full like origami. <laughs> he might be the weakest link. Yep. They might have to threaten him with death. <laughs> yeah, he's go- he's gonna want to run. Nynaeve has to fix something within herself in order mm. to understand that she can channel that energy, or there's some kind of blockage or something. Yes, and that was proven through her um, anger. So yes, W big Y. Thank how- you. Check proven how. Maureen literally told her you have to get past your anger if you want to do whatever whatever she said in the book. Okay. She has a block. It's an anger block. Check it. Yes. <laughs> Stop yelling at me. <laughs> I'm not yelling. I'm not yelling. She's I'm just yelling congested. yelling at me. I'm not, I, I don't think we should check that is correct yet because it hasn't been confirmed. Maureen literally said it. She literally said it. I don't think it's confirmed. Bro, you gonna make me pull the quote up? <laughs> she literally said it. I don't think it's good. All right, think... whatever. She didn't say anything about a block. Why are you she doing this the word... to me? She didn't use the word block. Did uh, she say anything about a block? Okay, let's see. She did say that you need to calm the fuck down if you want to if if you want to do anything. If you Part of the learn. training you will receive in Tarvalon wisdom will teach you to control your temper. You can do nothing with the one power when emotions rule your mind. Okay. Yes. She didn't say she has a block. The temper is the... You know what? You're going to raise my blood pressure. <laughs> I'm going to leave you, you alone. You need to control your Do what you anger. want with your spreadsheet, homegirl. Do what I you made it. I put it correct. Just listen to friend, friend, listeners know that. I put it correct. You know, the, the, the spreadsheet is bogus. I if, just if, put it oh, correct. Okay. It's a little bit more accurate I said accurate it four now. times already. Oh, okay. I, I thought Damn. so. I thought so. Don't Thanks. be I thought so in me. Thanks. Anyone who too. has <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who has the ability to channel has the option to train to be an Aes Sedai. That's true. We already confirmed that. That's true. That they have the option. They to have be. the option. Oh, 
Okay. I, Channelers do not have to be Aes Sedai. I, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, yes. Matt may be able to channel. Yes. That's not confirmed, though. Matt's bow is going to save some lives. We haven't seen that. He hasn't even got a bow no more. Just right. <laughs> he got a, he got a dagger. dagger. <laughs> Rand is the one the merge all and Trollocs came for. So they came for all three of them. So yep. we, can, we can make that correct. Thank you. Lan and Moraine have camps, other camps along the way. We haven't seen any yet. So okay. we don't know if they got anything set up. They are bringing Rand to Tarvalon so they can gentle him. So we don't know because we didn't get to Tarvalon. Uh-huh. See what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. They will make it to Tarvalon. We don't know because we mm-hmm. didn't get there yet. Rand's ability to jump on the horse with one hand as if he was doing it all his life is because of the power. That hasn't been confirmed. Kiva will learn from Nynaeve what happens to women who can channel but have an exclusionary exemption on why they can't be Aes Sedai. I don't remember that. I think you were saying that there was something that would exempt Nynaeve from becoming an Aes Sedai or something like that. I don't remember. But in any event, I don't, we haven't even reached Tarvalon yeah, yet, so we don't so know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I gotta think on that one. I don't remember that one. You said Nynaeve's block, if she has one, is an energetic one, perhaps from trauma, some True. chakra blockage. True. Yes, confirmed. Because she's angry. Yes. Moraine has been given orders to find the Dragon Reborn. Yeah. We don't know. Okay. We don't know that. Sure. It's the yeah. Emerald Seat. We don't know. Okay. We don't know that. All right. The order. Okay, there was the, <laughs> the orders to find the Dragon Reborn. Either came from the Armorland Seat. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> or the or the Hall of the Tower. Mm-hmm. You remember what the Hall of the Tower is, right? The collective. Yeah, it's of, the council. It's like a council. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like it's like the cabinet. Yeah, it's like her cabinet. Mm-hmm. So and the like Armorland three, Seat sits above them. Yeah, so it's yeah. like three three sit. They call them sitters. Three sitters from each Aja. Okay. sit on this council got you so there's you know there's seven ajas uh-huh. spoiler alert there's seven ajas so three times seven so that's 21 so they have 21 Aes Sedai mm-hmm. that sit on this council and then the armor and seat got you over. but the, and the and you know spoiler alert the whole of the tower has they have some like modicum of like power you know what i'm saying like you mm-hmm. know how like a you know you know how like you know how like in a on on a board of directors, yeah. the the CEO can get fired from the board. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, also, oh, sim- yeah, that's the spoiler I'm giving so you. So they can they oust can. someone in the Amaralyn seat. Yeah, they can. Spoiler alert. First time I'm giving her an actual an actual spoiler. Oh snap! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so let's see what let's see what Kiba does with that information. Tarvalon, Let's see, let's see what happens when we get there. Tomorrow. Yeah, right. Because by, <laughs> by the time we get there, <laughs> right, book eight. Well, yeah. you know. <laughs> no, but you said we're getting to Tarvalon. Did you say this book or you just said we're going to get there? What I said we're going to... We're going to get there this book. You said get, this book. You said did that I thing. say this book? I said they're not meeting up again until this book. Yeah. I don't think... I don't know. It. Is it this in this book? I don't know if it's this book. I might have to take that back. I don't think it's this book. That they make it's it It's a lot Tarvalon. of books. Okay. I, you know, they get, you got to <laughs> spread it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rand's dreams are not actual dreams, but dreamlike states that have foreshadowing. True. When did we say that was true? When he pricked his finger and started bleeding. What was the foreshadowing? That this was not like a super dream. Because you can't get hurt in dreams. Okay. Thank you. I don't know. Dreamlike states? Rand's dreams are not actual dreams, but not. dreamlike states. Because you're not really dreaming because you can't get hurt in a dream. Let's put a pin in that. Sure. Okay. Tarvalon has fallen and Lan and Moraine don't know it yet. I agree. You still think it's true. Yeah. Rand's dad was the eyes to die, not his mom. No, I think I took that back. First, you said his mom and you withdrew then that. Then I withdrew it and said his dad. You said his dad was the eyes to die. Now, we just learned that he was born of a maiden mm-hmm. of the spear, of mm-hmm. Aiel, an Aiel maiden. Yeah. So the mother is an Aiel maiden. That's not an eyes to die. Okay, maybe she's not an eyes to die, but maybe they can channel. Maybe they could touch the dead. So we were withdrawing Rand's dad was an Aes Sedai. You were withdrawing that? Yeah, because he'd probably be dead by now. Okay. Fireface sent the Trollocs. Yes. Okay. The Eye of the World is either another name for the Dark One or it refers to the Breaking. Okay, we could put a pin in that one. I have still have no idea. Okay. Moraine is leaning towards Rand as a Dragon Reborn. Uh, she hasn't said yet. Yeah, she, she hasn't. Yeah. But you still believe that she's leaning towards Rand. I, I know I that think it's pretty obvious. we're leaning towards Rand, but, I think, but I think does Moraine believe she, that it's Rand? I Rand? think yes, and I'll say because that conversation that she had with Nynaeve when they were still in 
um, Farallon, mm-hmm. where she was like, which one of them was born outside of the rivers? Obviously, oh, okay. the right. one with the, the tall motherfucker with the red with hair, the red hair. doesn't look like anybody <laughs> Nobody else. Nobody else in the district. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> it's the one who was born. I think she was just trying to do that to see how open Nynaeve would get with her. Okay. You know, and um, she knew, but she knew. Okay. Fireface was referring to male Aes Sedai or the curse of the male Aes Sedai when he said that Rand would dance on Aes Sedai's strings until he died. All right. Sure. Sure. <laughs> so what I can say to that, here's another spoiler. There are no male Aes Sedai. Right. Right. They can't. Because. They can't. Because they, they, they go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So here's a spoiler history. In the Age of Legends, mm-hmm. there were male Aes Sedai. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, Luz Theron was... Uh, an Aes Sedai. He was an actual Aes Sedai. So they were organized, men and women, and they worked together. Mm-hmm. And then once the male half got tainted mm-hmm. and there was a breaking of the world, uh-huh. when, you know, past the breaking, when Aes Sedai reorganized themselves, there mm-hmm. were no men. Yeah. So I guess we got to re- withdraw that one because it's yeah, not... Yeah, it's not, it's yeah, not accurate. It's not in scope. Men is Aes Sedai-ish as a potential channeler. You still think that? Nah. You're withdrawing that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Rand is battling internally with light and dark, and whichever one he chooses will prevail. Rand's friends will influence that decision. True. Still believe it? Yes. Tom is related to one of our main characters, possibly an uncle. Still believe it? Ooh, because he did mention a nephew. His nephew, Owen. He, he talked about his Owen. nephew, Owen, who, d- who died. Did Owen have a brother? <laughs> I don't know. Are you keeping that? We'll put a pin in it. Okay. Men's vision of land with seven ruined towers means that land is holding on to some historical thing that is affecting him in some way. We did that. That was accurate. Man, men's vision of a babe in a cradle holding a sword means land is Rand's dad. That is not true. <laughs> You're withdrawing that. Yeah, I am withdrawing that. Because we don't know who Lan's, Rand's dad is, but you no longer right. believe that it's Lan. Yeah. Okay. Because if it is, that means Lan would have had to have sex with a maiden of the spear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, men's vision of Matt with eye on a balance scale means that Matt will be some sort of justice equalizer. I hate that, but yeah. Sure. You you said that with hate, too, when you said I did. it. Yeah, it yeah. sounds... Yeah. And it, you also said that it means that Matt will be a voice of reason. Like, you hated saying it, but yeah. you, you said it. Mm-hmm. Matt, men's vision of Matt with a laughing face is his jovial prankster bullshit personality. Yeah, that's something. Men's vision of Rand with a sword that is not a sword me equals the Heron click. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> Heron. 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 Men's vision of Rand with a bloody hand and a white hot iron has something to do with Perrin. Men's vision of who? Rand. Rand, so the vision was Rand. There was a blood when she looked at Rand, she saw a bloody hand and a white hot iron. And you said that has something to do with Perrin. Why did I say that? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, let's are you withdrawing it? No. Are you leaving it? What are we doing? Gosh, let's put a pin in it because I really don't remember why I said that. Okay, men's re- vision of Rand when she saw lightning, she said that's channeling and the taint. Yep. You said that's channeling and taint. Yeah, okay, men saying you and I will meet again. And as for dreams, maybe your idea of a dream, blah, blah, blah. That means that men is Rand's boot thing. Yeah, she Still is. believe that? Yep. Fane is a dark friend. You do. You believe that. Yeah. <laughs> but you said Maureen tried to kill him and that's why he looked so disheveled. That's why he looked like a yeah. bum in the street because they tortured him or whatever. Yeah. You said there's some connection between Tom and the Great Hunt because he tells the story so often. Mm-hmm. Do you still believe that? Yes. He got on the boat. He gone. We will learn the truth of the stories that Tom tells of the Great Hunt in book two. I guess we're waiting for book two to Mm -hmm. see. Nynaeve will be offered and refuse the Armorlin seat. You believe that? Egwene will be the Armorlin seat. Yes. You believe that? Matt is a direct lineage descendant of the Manetherin king. We've proven yes. And I spelled Manetherin wrong. Of the king? Yes. The actual king. How do we prove that he's a descendant of the king? Because he was king? speaking in tongues. In the old tongue? Yeah. That doesn't mean that the king is his descendant. That just means he's he the, the old blood games. is strong with him. You playing you getting real semantic y over here. I'm All just right, saying. Go for it. Yeah. Then you said Egwene is a direct lineage descendant of the queen. And then you said because of that, Matt and Egwene are gonna get together. <sighs> do you still believe that? 
No. I'm going to withdraw that? Yeah. Okay. But you're keeping the descendants. Yeah. Okay. You said Lan has been in battle. When they call him Lord of the Seven Towers. Uh-huh. Last Lord of the Seven Towers. Uh-huh. You said that means that he was in battle and he lost other Seven Tower lords and he's the yeah. last one living. Uh-huh. Okay. Matt speaking the old tongue could be a case of the Manetheran King spirit possessing Matt's body. You still believe that? Um, Cause they were fighting and he started yeah. yelling and he, you know, um, let's leave that for now. Okay. Since Moraine and Lance said that the child, I guess we can, this is false. Since Moraine and Lance said the Trollocs would never go into Shadar Logoth, a bigger trust rift between the Edmonds Fielders and Moraine and land will result. We don't know that. that has, oh, you want to leave it? They haven't, they didn't been past Shadow Logan. They haven't said like, you told us it was. They ain't see each other. They ain't see each other. True. One of the three boys is related to Blaze, which is a character mentioned in the Great Hunt in the story that Tom tells. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The scar-faced man from Barillon is a dark friend, not a spy for the White Cloaks. You still believe that? Say it one more time. So when they were in Barillon, Mm -hmm. there was a dude in the inn with a scar on his yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's a dark they were friend. like, he's a spy for the white cloaks. And but I was you like, believe, nah, he's no, he's not friend. a spy for the white cloaks. He's a dark friend. I think he's a dark friend. Okay. Lan overheard the boys discussing their dreams and he knows that they've all been having the same dream. I agree. Yes. Matt, Matt is tainted now that he has this dagger. I agree. Um, All these predictions. Who? I just be predicting shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The group will not reunite until the end of the book. That's it. <laughs> Min told Maureen that they would get separated, which is why Maureen was comfortable letting everyone go on their own. Mm, I don't think she, I don't, I don't think that's true. I'll withdraw that. They mentioned the ways. You said it's like a portal where you can only travel in a specific area. We, mm-hmm. we haven't seen the ways yet. We yeah. still believe that. And to travel with a capital T means to use the one power to go long distances very quickly. Maybe both time and distance. We haven't seen anybody yeah. travel with a capital T to know what right. that means. I think Sticky Fingers, mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. <laughs> is going to steal back the coins that they gave the captain. And the captain will be a new foe that they have to worry about on their journey to Tarvalon. Uh, I'll take that That's out. Not, you're going to take it out? I mean, it's not true. You're just going to take it out because you don't want it to count against you. We'll Thank take it you out. Thank you so much. We'll take it out. <laughs> I think Egwene is going to butt heads with Perrin <laughs> as he learns how to be a leader. Oh, look at that. And, how she, and as she learns how to make decisions on her own without the influence of someone to tell her what to do. You I can say I can say that's yes. Mm-hmm. Nynaeve will grow to trust Maureen along the journey. She will somehow find out the true reason why Maureen wants the three boys at, along the journey. And this will allow Maureen and Nynaeve to forge a relationship. Not yet. Nynaeve has her root and heart chakra blocked. <laughs> yeah. Let's get down to the source. Pe- <laughs> Perrin is the king of the wolves. He is wolf brother. I agree. Not only are the boys having nightmares, but they are having the same nightmares at or around the same time. I think at some point they will all be in one dream at the same time, kind of like Nightmare on Elm Street, where they will <laughs> face Beelzebub's cousin twice removed on his daddy's side. I, I still think at some point, Yes. I think Rand chooses the dark side. Egwene becomes Red Aja and the majority of the rest of the series is about how Egwene tries to save the world from Rand and Nynaeve will have a huge hand in making that happen. I'm going to withdraw that, but whoa, that would be fire. Okay. That would be fire AF. Gelb is actually the sane one on the boat. I believe that everyone else is the is dark friends and Gelb is the one that realizes something is up with Rand and Matt. We don't know that yet. Yeah. Perrin and Egwene will meet Rand, Matt, and Tom before Nynaeve, Maureen, and Lan. So you said that Perrin and Egwene will hook up with Rand and Matt before Nynaeve, Maureen, and Lan can get to either to of get them. To get to either of them. And Perrin will have to save Matt and Rand from the captain and his crew by using his new friends, the wolves. So we know that's not true because mm-hmm. they, they're already off the boat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. we can just say that that's not, that's incorrect. There is some kind of pattern to Rand's moments of insanity. I'm correcting my errors. There's some kind of pattern to Rand's moments of insanity. I want to go back and look, but it's usually after he has a crazy dream where he directly makes some kind of contact or communication with Baal Zaman where he starts to act outside of himself. I'm still hunting the pattern. Are you still hunting that pattern? I think you told me that pattern. You told me what it was. I told you a you pattern. You told me every time he channels, 
he goes crazy. No, you're talking about when he has a dream. You're not talking about him channeling here. Yeah, so then technically... Yeah, when, when he channels, the cha- we're, that's the channeling sickness. Uh-huh. When you first, when you first channel. Uh-huh. Not like every time you channel forever, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. only like when it's brand new. Yeah. Right? When you first channel, then right at like 10 days after you channel or something mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. you have this channeling sickness. Yeah. And if you channel again, you have the channeling sickness again. But after a while, mm-hmm. you don't have the channeling sickness anymore. That's what we were... We weren't talking about channeling... We were talking about the channeling sickness, but you were connecting it to his dreams. Right. I wasn't sure. Okay. But I was like, there's some kind of pattern when he starts acting outside of himself. Okay, so yeah, we can say that that's correct. Thank you. You said Dapple and Narg would have been a great match. You made me put that on a prediction sheet. I made you? Yeah, you was like, this is a prediction. Dapple and Narg would have been a great match. You don't have to put it on a prediction sheet. Okay, we'll take that off. But they would have. Because that's not a prediction. It's it's more of a... They um, would have. The eye of the world is the creator. So before you said the eye of the world is either the dark one or it refers to the break now later you said the eye of the world is the creator i don't know what the eye of the world is you take all that shit off (laughs) withdraw everything yeah withdraw the eye i don't know what the eye of the world is black aja are those who didn't pass their test (laughs) (laughs) to become an eye to die we don't know that yet Mm -hmm. rand is a dragon reborn but he's gonna he is not going to fulfill the prophecy that everyone thinks he is i could put a pin in that Perrin will have to save Matt and Rand from the captain and his crew using his new friends. So that's false because they're not with yeah. them anymore. The Weasley fellow is Fane. We all believe that it's Fane. We haven't confirmed it, but mm-hmm. we can say, you know, mm-hmm. we'll leave it mm-hmm. until we confirm it. Tom is not dead. We don't know. You said the boys will make it to the Queen's Blessing in Camelin. You still believe it? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Aram... Okay, Aram likes Egwene enough to abandon the way and join the Menace adventure. So that's not correct. He we don't know yet. Oh, you think he could still... I think, of course. Think he's going to show up later? You, you think okay. Nynaeve popped out of thin air? He can too. Somewhere near the end of the book, or maybe the next book, we're going to learn what the encrypted message that the Aeol warrior, the maiden, mm-hmm. gave to the Tinkers. We're going to understand what that means. We're going to meet someone from the Aeol Waste, and they're going to know exactly what she was talking about. Mm-hmm. Tom's nephew Owen dies because he was not gentled in time. Mm-hmm. Tom might be a dark friend. Why is he trying to keep them from going to Tar mm. That was the end of the prediction. That is all of your predictions. Woohoo! That was a lot. That you probably added lot. another hour to the. Listen, <laughs> oh, and sorry, did, y'all. Ended. All right. So. So that was fun. That was fun. Little blast from the past and most of those i don't even remember but that's that's the fun in this right yes. that is the fun in all of this yes 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 yes. so let's move on as we you know internally argue about which of my predictions were actually right but i guess whatever <laughs> to uh big up big up big up hey all yay, of that woman yay, damn big up yay, big up yay. all of that girl damn big up big up all right so <laughs> <laughs> We're going to big up today. I would like to big up about another podcast. Woo. It is called Tarvalon After Dark. Yay! <laughs> I'm still learning these buttons. Sorry. <laughs> so Tarvalon After Dark is hosted by Jess, Nablus, Lesby Nerdy, and Rakappa Sadai. Even though Rakappa Sadai is, you know, still, still recovering. And what I would like to highlight Mm-hmm. Is that Lesby Nerdy? Mm, hey, friend! Is trying to get to WatCon. Oh snap! And we know that Lesby Nerdy is not on this continent. Mm-hmm. She's on another continent, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. really, 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 really far away. Yeah, and so it costs a lot of money uh-huh. for her to travel. So there is a GoFundMe. Hey, and we want all of you listener friend friend listeners to support this GoFundMe. Go drop a dollar or five in there, or or fifty. You know, if you got it, listen, drop a hundred. Listen, whatever you can. Whatever you can. Because we want to help get. As often as you can. Lesby nerdy to WatCon. So yeah. that the links for both the Tarvalon After Dark podcast, as well as the GoFundMe, 
mm-hmm. to get Let's Be Nerdy to WatCon will be in the description box. I know y'all want to meet that Memoji in real life. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Put the face to the face. Yes. Put the yes. face to the Memoji. So that's all I have in terms of big ups. All right. Well, you know. Happy Pride Month! Yes! Is it June? Yes! Yes, yes, yes. Be yes. queer. Yes. Be loud. Yes. Be proud. Yes. Um, also, Happy Music Month. Yes. Yay. Happy Music Month. I didn't even know about this until Char um, came in and told me. Yes. So, you know. And happy go. birthday to oh. Prince Rogers Nelson. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I had a little somber music here, but we love us some Prince over yes, here. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. You know, I never meant to cause you any trouble. Don't don't get me started. I will sit okay. here. Okay, no, okay. And sing that whole fucking song. Okay. Just only want to see you. Dancing in the, in the purple rain. Purple laughing rain. in the purple rain. Whatever you want to yeah. do in the purple rain, I want to see you do doing it. Okay. All right. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> I love Prince. Mm. So, next week... We're going to be talking about chapters 29 and 30. Oof. Chapter 29. Mm-hmm. Tell me what you think, who you think. It's called Eyes Without Pity. Eyes Without Pity? Yes. We're going back to Perrin. Okay. Chapter 30 is called Children of Shadow. Children of Shadow? Yeah. What do you think that's about? We're going to Rand. I think there's Children of Light and then there's Children of Shadows. Um. Okay. So we're we're going to Ran. We're in Camelin. We're in Camelin. Sure. Chapter thirty. We're in Camelin. Something like that. All we're right. We're getting close to it. All or right. Something. We'll, we'll find. We'll find out next week. <laughs> All right. All right. That's gonna be. Um, That's it. Yeah. We're finished. I guess in the meantime. Only five hours later. <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> if you got through this episode, thank you. Yes. And, you know, you can find us on all the social medias: Facebook, yes. Instagram, and Twitter. And and and. You can also um, listen and subscribe and like and comment and share mm-hmm. and um, review. Review. And rate and review. Rate. Uh, what in color? You know, we are on the Spotify, the Apple, the YouTube, the Google, the TuneIn, the Audible, the Amazon, and all of the all of the girls. We are everywhere for everybody. What in color? And you can chat with us on our Discord. Please, pretty please, it's so fun over there by clicking the link tree in our bio. Word to the wise listener, friend, friend, listeners. Don't try to record a podcast dehydrated. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely drink your water. I am getting all the tickles in my throat, which are causing. Which you're not going to hear because we're going to edit it out. But yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I'll leave that one in. (laughs) (laughs) But. You know, search white in color, chat with us on the Discord by clicking in our link tree that will be in the bio or in the description box. And if you have any questions, we still check our email. I know we're old. Everybody's on like, you know, TikTok, but we still check email. So yes. white in color at gmail.com. We over there too. Yes, we are. And thank you all so much for listening to white in color. Remember, come in love and go in peace. Just don't let... The dark one's funk suffocate you like it's doing me today and put tickles in your throat while you're trying to record on the way out. (laughs) Deuces.